What's going on, GOATs? Welcome back to Buku Bucks. My name is Ramo, and today I will be starting the ICT speedrun. Now, what exactly is this? Well, if you are a trader, most likely you have came across the name ICT, and ICT is supposedly the originator of smart money concepts. Although I don't know if this is true or not, I honestly don't care because if the concepts work, they work, whether they came from him or a homeless man on the street. But to be honest, throughout my seven years of trading, if you guys do want a more in-depth on my background, my journey, things like that, leave a comment down below. But for the past seven years of my trading journey, I probably have been learning smart money concepts for about four to five. Um, and throughout those four to five years, I've never directly learned from ICT himself. And as I've gone throughout the years and looked back at some of this content, I could definitely see how most likely he is the originator of these concepts. So the idea is for an experienced trader like myself to go back to the original source and break down his content. Because if you didn't know, ICT has about 11 days worth of content. Yes, 11 days. That is a long time, of course. And honestly, no one is going to sit there for 11 days and review all of his content. Um, if you guys have, shout out to you. But realistically, the majority of us are not going to do so. So the idea is for me as an experienced trader, take you guys alongside with me. So hopefully not only can I learn something and implement it in my trading, I can help you guys and implement it in your trading. And yeah, just take you guys along with me. Now, how am I going to do it? Well, let me show you exactly how I'm going to do that. If you guys do want access to this PDF, you guys can get it for free on my free Discord. All you got to do is join the free Discord with a link in the bio. 31 day ICT speedrun, full playlist on YouTube at Buku Bucks. All this means is all the videos we will be reviewing on ICT's channel will be placed in a nice playlist on my YouTube channel. Here is the syllabus for the next 31 days, and it goes over exactly what we will be going over on that specific day. And all of this has been inspired by this image down here. Here you can see all the videos included slash not included from ICT's channel. There's about 275 hours of content, but only go over about 90 hours. Shout out to Lumi Traders on Twitter for the blueprint. If you believe other key videos are missing, please let me know. So since I have never gone over any of ICT's content, I didn't really know exactly which videos to look at or even in the order that I should look at them. So I found this specific person on Twitter that had a roadmap for us. So shout out to them. It seemed like this was pretty reliable as I've kind of already briefly gone through it. I have not watched the videos, like I said, but to the looks of it, it looks pretty reliable. So we will focus on this. And since I have not looked at all the content, if you believe any other videos are missing that are important for me or us to learn, please let me know and hopefully I can add it to the roadmap. As you can see, only about 90 hours of content is included. So there are a little bit over 100 hours of content that we're missing. So keep that in mind, even though we are not going over every single thing, the idea is to break down the key concepts. But as you can see here, how am I going to break down 90 hours into 31 days? Well, the idea is as I'm on YouTube, I will actually be able to speed up the playback feature. I can actually get it up to about three times the speed. So the idea is if I actually watch an hour a day with you guys, I'm actually watching three hours of content with you guys, and that should break it down to about 30, 31 days or so. So that's the general idea. Everything will be a lot faster. It'll be quicker, technically about three times quicker, but we will get through all the core content, all the key content that will help us understand exactly what ICT is teaching. I also added down here um, color coordinated sections that correlate to these sections up here with all of the videos from ICT's channel. So if you want to go down here and see exactly which videos are not included and which videos are included, you guys have this as a visual. Me personally, I did this mainly for myself so I can see exactly which things are not included and understand maybe if I see something that maybe should be included, I know exactly that it wasn't included, if that makes sense. Kind of sounds silly, but basically if the video wasn't included and it looked intriguing, it looked like it had important information, I would want to include it. So if you guys want to go down here and see exactly what is included, what is not, you guys can use the color coordination 
and figure out exactly what we will be going over. But you don't have to. That is just something extra if you guys do want to take a look at that. Now, if you guys do want to see the playlist, let's go over to YouTube. Let's go to my channel at Buku Bucks. Once you click on playlist, you will actually see the ICT speedrun with about 202 videos. Once you click on this, every single video is in its chronological order. So it is all organized. You do not have to go to ICT's videos, click through different playlists, jump around from different times. Because if you actually do look at the PDF, some of this stuff is actually not in chronological order. You'll see that these real money, real results isn't going to be one of the very first videos he ever posted. It may be somewhere in the middle or even more so. Actually, I don't know exactly where it is, but it could be somewhere higher rather than lower, if that makes sense. So to make it very simple, rather than going through different playlists on his channel, I made it very simple. So you can come to my channel, click on this, and everything is in chronological order based on the roadmap that we have so far. So moving forward, we'll be breaking down all these videos in this specific chronological order and hopefully breaking it down into 31 days. And also, although I did shout out Lumi Traders, you can see that this is the original post. Once again, shout out to them if you guys want to go show support to them. I honestly don't know who they are, but thank you for giving us a roadmap. So if you guys want to check out their content, feel free to check them out. So ultimately, to sum this up, the ICT speedrun is going to be breaking down 90 hours worth of content down into about 30, 31 hours. And we will be breaking these down in the next 31 days, giving us about an hour worth of content every single day. And the idea behind it, things can change since I don't know exactly how it will go. The idea is I will be watching it with you guys. I will be commentating when I feel like it's important to help guide you guys as well, because I'm sure there's some things that I will probably already know, and I can give you guys my feedback, my understanding, or even give you some of my questions, my concerns, so you guys can hopefully learn as I go as well. I will also be creating notes. Um, I believe as the video goes through, I will be creating these notes, but I probably will organize and clean up the notes maybe sometime on my own after, so it doesn't take up more time throughout the video. And then coming into the next day, that next video, I'll be breaking down or summarizing the previous content. So that's the idea right now. Things can change. If you guys think that there is a better way of going about it, or if you have other ideas of that sort, please let me know. I am open to it. I am learning as I go since I am really blind reacting and doing this for the first time. I don't believe anyone has ever done this ever. So this is partly why it inspired me to do it since here in the trading world, it is kind of hard to gain exposure throughout the community. There are a lot of great traders, but at the same time, a lot of traders are doing the exact same content, just doing review breakdowns and just, you know, just simple stuff of explaining certain concepts, which, does very well at some points, but when you have so many traders doing the exact same thing, it is very hard to stand out. So with something like this, I believe this is something that no one has done yet. And ICT being a large creator, large trader, however you want to word it, I believe I can potentially help out a lot of people. And especially since no one has done it before, hopefully I will stick out a bit more. So overall, even as an experienced trader, I am always a student. I'm always willing to learn. And I understand that I do not know everything. So breaking down ICT's content, hopefully I can learn something, but at the same time, take you guys alongside with me and do it in a unique way. Because like I said, breaking down 11 days worth of content would be very long and boring. But if I'm able to speed it up, break down just the key concepts of the key videos and put it in a nice organized fashion for you guys, this can be very beneficial, not only for me, but for you guys as well. Now, before I get started, I do want to read ICT's bio here on YouTube. I am the mentor of your mentor. I am the ghost in the machine, the author and creator of Smart Money Concepts and what many erroneously call Wyckoff Theory. To be honest, I did not know that ICT also claims to be the creator of Wyckoff as well. There is absolutely nothing like what you're going to learn from me on this channel. I am often imitated. Many have renamed my life's work, but you will see the source of most things being marketed today as bank trading, SMC, interbank trading, and price action trading. 
sprouted right from the lectures and teachings I authored, which I can somewhat agree with because I've definitely seen people in the past basically learn a concept from somebody else, rename it, rebrand it, and call it their own, when in reality, most likely, it did come from ICT himself. There is no mentor who taught me these concepts. There is no competitor who can match these concepts. I have freely shared my private mentorship core content lectures to prevent frauds from reselling them, and now you can see how many have plagiarized my concepts, and some have foolishly pretended to have created them themselves. Procure yourself some note-taking instruments, roll up your sleeves, and discover how little you really knew until now. Enjoy Michael J. Huddleston. And here, if you guys want to check out some of his other works or some of his links, it is available here. And once again, all this content is here available for free on his channel on YouTube. So if you guys want to access this, just search up ICT in the search bar, or you can search up Inner Circle Trader, and this should pop up. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start the ICT speed run. Once again, this is all available, or the playlist is all available on my channel at Buku Bucks. Go to playlist, and this playlist will be here. But for day one, we are going to be going over real money, real results, parts one through three, and trade psychology and effective journaling. Once again, these videos will be in chronological order, so they are available here. But if you also do want to see, where they are within his channel. We can scroll down and see that we are actually watching a couple videos within the 2022 ICT core content, which I believe is a little bit further down. Right here, we're watching these three videos. And if you scroll a little bit more down, we are also going to be watching this one as well. So once again, like I said, without a further ado, let's go ahead and start the ICT speedrun. All right, this video and the two following in the series is important to you. Make sure you read this disclaimer because it's very helpful. All right, so we're going to take a look at some perspective here. Uh, the question all the time today is March 31st, is 12 39 p.m. I'm going to log into TD Ameritrade account and see a live account. And the question all the time what is realistic? What is possible? What is the expectation? In my opinion, as a mentor, what should my students expect? And that's at least a video more or less address my opinion. Okay, my opinion is not a test and stone, everybody gets the same result type thing. So we're going to take a look at the results when I first started with this account. And I think last year, late, I think it was like, not because of December, first time I get December something like that in anticipation of the new year. So what I'm doing here is looking up the range from the date of January 1st to the 31st of January 2022. And I'm going to set up the print. And I'm going to make these margins a little bit wider. This is going to be a very boring, boring video series, okay? But it's necessary. Uh, not necessary for the majority of you, because most of you are constant readers and viewers and students of mine. You don't really necessarily need to see these types of things. There's a small number of you that make a business out of saying that I'm fraud and I can't trade with my funds and don't work in hindsight, trade with them, trade. So I'm going to submit this for you all to get on. All right, so I'm going to print the January statement. Everything will be included so that we have to see the cash sweep, the balance sweep, between each trade day at the beginning of the new trade, you'll see what the balance was. There's no transfer of money, okay? <laughs> so you can see there's several days there was money going on, and I'm actually going to buy on blue, sell on red. This indicator gives extremely accurate trade signals. Eight of the traders have tried to say they're not. The statement here. All right, and I'm just going to show you that's the time right here. And I'll pull back up the system time that was printed at this date at the time. That's why I logged into the account. The time changed by from delay to complete printing and create the PDF file. I'm just going through that. So when you have the actual PDF file, which I'll link in the description below, this video and then part two and three, you have access to download directly the actual PDF file. So you can see every single transaction. The time that I entered in the trade, you can do your own work on you know, what it looked like at the time. But let me just say that the majority of what you're going to see here is me creating a scenario for my students who have asked many things in this presentation. How to correct drawing, how to correct. All right. So, so far, if you don't understand what's going on, he is pulling up his TD Ameritrade account and basically showing proof of all of his transactions or orders being filled so far. Correct. Over trading, how to mitigate uh, losing streaks and how to come back to it without using excessive. Leverage, which I can't leverage because I'm using this broker and they're using the margins that are set by the exchanges. So I'm only conducting trading on one contract. Anytime you see two contracts, it's me doing a reversal trade. So that's the business there on the statement. Now you'll be able to see that what I here real time in this recording, as well as I'm for you, it's going to be your actual hard copy in PDF format. And again, I'm just showing you the full account number. I've facetiously done this every time I've shown my account. The very first time I showed it, um, I blocked out it. Anyone that's slowly viewed it, I'm going to see this. It's actually the very account number that I started with. So there's no time for you here. So I'm going through each individual day here, showing you those new trades taken. Actual first trade I entered on this account was January 14th. I funded the account with $25,000. I wrote a lot of comments on that for controls and people that are actually supporting me, saying that I started with $20,000, I started with $23,000, it's $25,000, okay, it's $25,000, and we should be here. Here's our first trade. This is what they will have. The trade will be rushed into a live trade in patience, and they'll be met with a losing trade, and they'll take it and hold it too long, and take a larger loss than they otherwise would normally take in their system. Okay, and I'll show you the next trade here. Now, I'm telling you, this is going to be a boring process, but this is me literally taking you day by day by day, showing everything, nothing hidden, but like this right here, looking for a bit of $200,000 into the account, and my trade will match that. Okay, they'll show any kind of regular trades doing that. So, naturally, you see something like that. Normally, that's the transfer of a million dollars, and you might quickly transfer a million dollars. I didn't really have this money in the account. Obviously, it wasn't just because I was trying to break your trades, but the point is, sometimes things like that get reported in the accounts, and there's nothing to do about it. It's just something that's a glitch, but you're going to see something later on when we get to March, where we actually were really messing with me. So, now that I'm taking money back out of the account, I'm Right, let's take a look at the next trading day. And again, nothing terribly exciting. And it's right about now. The trade is getting more interesting trying to fix the drawdown. Go back to your rules that you when we first started. And you start working towards getting back. This is the day that uh, the troll said, uh, I have money. And if you could see this, you would take it off the next thing. And you can see the actual trades. It was not a micro account. These were means. Okay. There's actual details. So you can build your channel. So you're not going to pay for your pool. <laughs> so there's the business there. And we'll continue on with our details here. Okay, so now again, a little bit better in terms of taking your shot, taking your systems, entry, sticking with it, I'm trying to do more than is necessary. 
Same thing here, taking a trade, making sense of it. Look at the details. And go to the next trade day for January. And again, a little more details. You can see the accounts wrong. And eventually what will happen is you'll get a day where you do something wrong or you get into this mindset that you get in there and fix it, you get into trades and guess it because you're on a roll, okay? But a winning streak can create days like this. And this is me literally just pressing the button over and over again and I'm trying to have this broker beat on me. Because I want to see if they'll do what eventually happens in the market and we'll see if we can get that much. But right now, I'm just doing a lot of trades. The candle line, what will happen if you get a winning trade and go into a revenge mode? It's just like a revenge trade scenario. You're getting and you're starting lots and lots of trades. As soon as you lose control over what you're focused on following terms of your rules, you need to stop. Even if it's a losing trade you end up with, stop. That's the easiest solution to fixing tail spins. All right, back to the process of following the resetups. It's a simple setup, taking that. Here's your details on that. So you correct yourself by lowering your trade frequency, getting your win and stopping. Something pull up. The top right here. And I'll show you the ending balance on the last trading day of January, minus the starting balance of $25,000. Here's $5,564. You divide that by the starting balance, and that'll give you a rate of return of plus 22%. Not bad, not bad. So we're going to do the same thing with month two or February 2022. So if I'll talk to you then, be safe. All right, so that is the end of part one. Honestly, I have not traded on TD Ameritrade, so the platform itself was somewhat new to me, but ultimately he is just showing some proof on him making money in the markets. So nothing really much to take notes of just other than that he has proof of him making money during that specific time period. All right, as we mentioned in the first of the series, please read the description and the rest of disclosures. And my opinion is just that, I believe this is what I think you can do, but that's what they are applying my thought. But not everybody's going to get these results, obviously. All right, so we left off with the January results. We're going to look at the February 2022 results. So I'm going to set the range date for February 1st to the last day of February 28th. I'll check my margins. I'll make sure the page is completely full. And I'm going to print that PDF file now. I'm going to change the name to February here. And now everything will be on the up and up. I'm going to take note of the time that I'm doing this in the upper right corner on the broker. And in the lower right corner of my laptop. So the times are matching. Pull that file up. All right. So it's still printing. Until it completely finishes, it'll do this. So I wasn't going to edit it out, but I don't want to get it. I don't want to cut something like that. So I'll give it a couple more. And you can see it's still. So give it a moment here. Again, it's a longer file. I'm not sure you can in February. So I'm going to show you it's just printing still. That's what I'm saying here, because it's still in the print store. Just a little bit longer. There we are. So there's the statement. Now it's a little bit of a lag, but there's the time right there in the time down here. So there's no real disparity between the two time reference points from actually creating the PDF file and what's actually being shown here. And again, I'm literally just scrolling through this, and yes, it's anonymous. Yes, it feels ridiculous. I don't know a lot of you that don't require me doing this, but shaking your head like this is ridiculous why you do this. <laughs> but imagine you were that person that's in single offense and you've watched people on the internet trying to make themselves from mud and making up things that people don't do. Wouldn't you feel better if you saw this? If you were the one that were doubting, that's all I'm doing here. I'll say this to my members of the <laughs> So we're scrolling through all of your hard copies of the PDF file. The link will be in the description of the video. You're absolutely welcome to download that directly, and you'll see everything matches what has been printed here. I'm not sure. Black Friday, we guarantee you'll get from hell. We'll get a single penny. Plus, 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 we'll get Transactions that do not pay out because that does not end your career. Okay, they're steep ups, folks. And over your career, if you add up every single negative transaction, one is not profitable. It's gonna be a lot of money if you are in this long run. So get accustomed to seeing it. Don't fear it. Don't be swayed by it. Don't feel like you're a failure because you need to attend to it. But don't fear it. Okay. So I'm gonna show you a engineer train right here on Valentine's Day, my anniversary. Valentine's Day massacre. I'm gonna get that one with the question by one of my students. You know, we fix drawdown. That's needed for you. Uh, we're gonna now go back to the broker. Okay, so everything's here is in detail on that PDF file. This is printed in the link in the description below. So we're gonna look at the first trading day of February. There's the business there. Okay, and watch the balance that changes each day. Okay, so a little bit of busy day there. And an extra day here. And a little bit more trades, a little more busier than would be expected. And so right about now, the trader, in my opinion, would encounter some internal struggle where they're trying to find their own groove, okay? And, and you only do that by getting in there and actually executing. So in the beginning, you want to be mindful of not over-trading. Don't do a whole lot of transactions. Um, it is as beneficial as you can make it as long as you're not blowing the account. So if you're taking lots of transactions for the sake of overcoming the anxiety of entering, okay? Um, lots of transactions can overcome that. And you get in, as soon as you get the transaction entered, you exit it, and then watch the trade hands up. That's the only way you're going to do it. And you have a day like this where it's extremely busy. And this will be a day where over-trading would be more or less what's being done here. So you shouldn't have days like that. You don't want to do that. You want to have a very controlled number of trades and trades. By the looks of it, I think what he's saying here, he had a lot of trades you on a very this specific controlled number day. Of, you don't want to do that. Let me see. I know it looks like a lot, but I think a lot of these are being opened and closed and maybe even some partials being taken. So this says open and then close, open and close. So I don't think these are all individual different positions, but I think this is several positions with different closing positions, if that makes sense. So I think this is just a more active day that he is showing us where there's a lot more trades being taken. But keep in mind that each one of these positions or each one of these um, orders isn't a separate position. Most likely one order will have an order of it being opened and then an order of it being closed. So you shouldn't have days like that. You don't want to do that. You want to have a very controlled number of Trades and transactions try not to do a whole lot of in and out unless you're trying to desensitize yourself to execution. And lots of students that are fearful of taking trades because they don't know the results and they don't know how to exit properly, but they feel confident about seeing stuff in a day like this. A lot of trades that would be otherwise reasonable. Let me go back real quick. Yeah, 
71 orders. That's actually kind of insane. So at least half of it. So we'll call it 70. What is that? 35 separate positions on a specific day. That's actually quite a lot. And I think what he's saying here, some days will be like that. And you don't really want them to be like that. But there might be times where you actually do this on purpose. So you can actually desensitize yourself from taking positions because some people definitely have a fear of actually pressing the button and being in a position. So I think he's just saying that potentially you might want to have days like this if you are that type of person. Reasonable. Okay, make sure you get here on the other February. Again, if you're fearing execution entries, the only thing you can do is push the button, get in it. Once you have a transaction recorded, exit the Now, if someone is entering for a while, here's something like this. It's not that you want to do that. Remember, this is the, the context of what I'm showing you here is that the student has been doing demo only. There's a great chasm of learning that separates demo and live training. So, some of the things that I've seen over the years as a mentor is fear of executing. And the questions come up like, I see this up, I'm afraid to take and pull the trigger. The only thing you can do is pull the trigger. You have to do that. So, the way you go into that system, you can yourself from it, is push the trigger button, eat the cost of commission, and whether the trade is profitable or not profitable by the time you exit it, that's how you do it. And you study what transpired after your execution. And it's just a matter of doing that over and over again. And what happens, you'll grow more confident in your execution model, which your framework, you know, if you're ready to have some number of lines on the trade entry, all things I'm teaching, or maybe I'm teaching, maybe something else you have, or maybe you develop yourself, whatever that model is, if you're fearful of taking a trade or executing it, you know, like him, you can sensitize yourself by just taking a lot of trades. And Larry Wayne said that's what he did, he was fearful of taking a trade, and all he did was just taking trades over and over again. And more or less that's how I did it, too, it's how I'm teaching it back in 1992. And it works, but you have to be careful not to blow the account and overstay your welcome. And you see here, obviously, Marks. Presenting a lot of. Yeah, so ultimately here, I believe he's saying that even with the commissions, um, you might find yourself in a losing position, but sometimes that is actually beneficial to just simply be in a position to help you get rid of that fear of executing, pressing that button, or just being in a position in general. So, so yeah. Conditions that would otherwise be impactful to the bottom line here. And this is the day where you're gonna wanna change gears, okay? Lots of drawdown on the 14th, and almost like 20% uh, or so. So we have to go back into following rules. Following rules, you're, you're moving like now, we're back in following rules, and you want to set up, and be content with it, moving to the sidelines. Okay, next day. Not bad. Just a few transactions. First trade was a losing trade and negated that. Came back with a net gain one day. Mm -hmm. Not by much, but there's still some growth going on. Not getting too aggressive about the frequency of trade. The trade about this point will start finding it a little bit more easier to get in and find the roof, the model, their mojo, if you will. <laughs> there's transactions there. I want you to be more video, folks. Some of you folks just simply want to see this kind of stuff. And there's just a really small little day there. And when you don't feel it, you don't see something, you don't execute, you leave it alone. Then you have another day here where you feel like you miss a move and you get spiteful, and you go, I'm going around, I'm trying to get what I want to get, and then you end up over trading again. What's the solution to this? What do you do to correct this right here? Lower your frequency trade. Set yourself a boundary on the next trade day, one or two at most trades. If you start going over three and all that, you're, you're asking for trouble. Okay, you see the trades taken there? That's the opposite. A trade is if you don't trust yourself, you force yourself to stop. Don't take any trades, just observe, go back to take reading. Can I mention all my YouTube channels? I wasn't taking my trades the rest of the month of February, and you're seeing that actually occurring here. So I'm getting the end bounce of February. I'm sorry, January. I'm comparing to the end bounce of February. So January's end bounce, there's a difference between the gain. You divide that by January's end bounce, and I'll give you a return, which is positive 31% for February. Next month. Why is everyone spiraling over YouTube banning ad blockers? And it actually gets cool. All right, so that was the end of part two. Wasn't very different from part one. He is just being very open and showing you kind of his progress or showing his profits and losses, not trying to hide anything which I think is pretty good, pretty beneficial, especially for new traders wanting to see what it's really like to be a trader because obviously in the um, real world or just in social media, people definitely fake or just only show the wins and not the losses. So he is just trying to be very upfront and open with that specific time period and exactly his profits and losses and things like that. All right, once more, thank you for the here. And again, this is my opinion. This is what I believe that a cute trade could do. Not because it's realistic, not over the top, not even at all. Alright, we can offer where for February. We're now to look at March 2022. And I was taking a break from producing videos and kind of vacation from teaching mentoring and such. So this month will be a little bit plus. I'm gonna try to get my job in 20% or so color month. So I'm printing these statements here. Once I'm just on the previous two videos in the series. And we're back into that bowling process going through each individual trade deck. Alright, so all this will be translated to a PDF file. And again, the link will be in the description below in the video. You're welcome to go through that and scout through. We'll see all these days here today's video on trade. Like I said. Alright, so I'm gonna look at all this through the PDF file. Okay, so there it is. That is the time and the printing of the file. You can see the time is right here, not necessarily 22. So it's the time to print and process it and make it to my windows. So I pull up the chart here. Not only scrolling through this, because I want you to be able to verify that the very file I'm making public to you will fall in the link that's below this video description. When you open the video, I'm talking about the video file. You'll see this file is exactly the very file that you're watching producer and recording. Nothing's limited, nothing's changed, nothing's edited. I'm not hiding anything from you, okay? Uh, this is to me, in my opinion, this is like the best way to see somebody being able to work with marketers. They need you, okay? Um, there's a day right here where the broker actually was in my mind messing with me, and I said, oh, you're not, you're, you're on, so I'm taking two cash for it. I didn't see every form that they had. So we definitely have an issue with our line for the CME. Apologies for that. Not sure if it was on our end or theirs. But regardless, I'm reviewing your previous orders now. If any rejected orders were marketable at a better price, I'll send a request on that price. Yeah. Just a heads up, folks. So, um, just a heads up, folks. That's not what we're 
if it was going to have an issue with our, as you see here, that they had. So we definitely have an issue with our line for the CME. Apologies for that. Not sure if it was on our end or theirs. But regardless, I'm reviewing your previous orders now. If any rejected orders were marketable at a price, I'll submit a request to honor that price. Yeah. Just a heads up, folks. So, uh, yeah. They were coming in. They were end up coming losing trade. Interesting, isn't it? But I recorded trades and we get known to them. And since then, I haven't had any problems. But I had a lot of trading days, grinding days, after that year. Because the majority of those are not going to be flattened. Vacation. I see vacation. I'm going to sell some folks. I need to sit still, but I'm going to rest. I've been going for a number of years already. All right, so all this here will translate back into a day by day perspective. So that'll be the first day of March. Okay, so there is our equity base and the changing of that. Lots and lots of executions again. And back to following the model. Less trades, hit your shots, don't over extend yourself. Okay, following the model. Find your setup, get in, get out, and done. Okay, small one there. And all that's up, folks. When I treat you like a business, when you get in, take your pound of flesh and leave. Same thing for the next day. That gets boring, okay? And a new trader doesn't like that. They want excitement. So naturally, you know what it comes. It's the same time. <laughs> you're going to start doing more and more and more because it becomes addictive. You like that feeling of meaning. So you're going to go in here and multiple trades and building up a, a large list of commission costs in terms of the average new trader. They're going to go about 30% of your account the first year trading because you're going to do a lot of trading and we might not buy one when it comes to commissions. And you'll see the line is about 10% since the beginning of the year. So on all trades versus the equity theme. All right? And another day that was a little busier than I think you should have. But here's the transaction for that as well. Not that way there. Now, how many trades should you have? Uh, I think that two trades in one session, or two trades in the afternoon session, or four trades total, that's at the maximum, I think. And you have another day where you just don't need to do uh, When you have that, you pull that back, go back to the process of sticking to the model, not having lots of trades like this. How you correct it? Reduce trade frequency. So right now I'm trying to figure out, there are certain days where he is only taking about four or two orders, but there's other days where he is trading a lot more. I'm trying to figure out when he decides to trade more orders or just have more trades on a specific day because it sounds like he wants us or he wants um you to not over trade and have a bunch of orders and keep your trade plan um, being executed and not really placing too many orders like i said but it also sounds like there's certain days where he does do a lot of orders so i'm not too sure exactly when he decides to do that or not, but at the same time, he's telling us that we should not try to do too many orders and stick to only a few. And like he said, usually he takes about a max of four. Okay, now back to the model again. Control the execution, not doing lots of transactions, everything back as it should be. You correct yourself, you're the only one controlling you folks. Okay, the purpose not done. Say, you're giving us too much money, you need to stop. <laughs> you're going to do it. So you have to have some kind of way of referring back to what you've been doing. Not beating yourself up, but you've got to be mindful and responsible about what you're doing. So don't take a lot of trades. Again, the easiest way to do it is tell yourself you cannot take more than X number of trades, and I'll just give you my opinion. I guess the best way to learn if you're new is just to take one good setup. If you get a good one trade, stop. Let that be a discipline exercise for you. And believe me, it sounds easy, but for a new trader, you won't be able to do it. You'll feel that itch once you go in and take more transactions. And there's the month where nothing must be done. They're all days where new trades are taken. So we're going to take a look at the ending balance for the month of February. And look at the difference between the ending balance here at $50,000 and $1 minus the ending balance in February, 2022. There's the net gain here at $10,000 Divide that by the ending balance of February, and that'll give you your return. It's 25 plus percent for the month of March. So there's your results, and there's your live trade results. And my name. Okay, so we looked at three months of live trade, one contract basis. And there has been. So it sounds like from what he said, is that you might find yourselves in certain situations where some days you are going to be taking a lot of trades and that's fine as long as you get yourself back on track that's kind of what i got from that little section so far no signs of the accounting more now but they can be double i took the account down two times in two periods of i answered two of my private students inquiry about what would it look like how would it look and what do you do to fix those types of things and i literally made that response and promised I'm going to slow this down because it actually is kind of hard to hear him. I wonder if I can pull up, yeah, close captions. Maybe that might help, but we'll see. To her, public with you. So you're not entitled to this. You weren't entitled to see me trade a live account. You weren't entitled to me to spend my days proving something that the majority of you already believe. But I understand. Okay, it's reasonable to be skeptical, okay? Some of you will say, well, this doesn't prove anything. You know, someone could get lucky this many times. And granted, I would say, yeah, but I did lots of transactions, lots of transactions to prove that, number one, one contract, I can pull this account out of any drawdown. And I can do it quickly. And I don't need to do 15 contracts with a discount broker. I don't need to do any of those types of, in my opinion, over leveraging. So I showed examples of what it looks like if you over trade. You can see the costs associated with that. And also you can see when the trader gets their mindset corrected and they go back to why they're doing what they're doing. They're not in the business to take lots of executions. That's not what this is about. This is about taking things that make sense. Now, the logic behind every one of these setups is not important. Now, some of you are like, what? It's not important. No, it's not important. Because the first hurdle you're going to have when you're trading with live money is money management. You're going to have to learn to respect the equity in your account. The only way that you're going to determine whether or not you respect it, is how do you handle drawdown? Drawdown is when you have losses mounting and the equity starts to reduce. Now that can be a sudden drawdown reduction or it could be a gradual reduction of the equity. Either one is painful. The sharp, quick, sudden drawdown, that tends to be horrific in the eyes of the trader. The gradual erosion of equity over time, while very uncomfortable, it's better from the perspective of a new student or a new trader seeing that versus a 30%, 40% drawdown. 
Now, I took the account, if I'm not mistaken, you didn't do it, take a look at the, uh, the account on the 14th of February. The equity, I believe, dropped down about 20% or so, and then I took the account up some 60% from there. So, if you look at it from a profitable stance, is the ability for me to take the account using what I teach you all here for free. Can those concepts pull the account up from drawdown into a position of profitability? I have now shown proof of that. I've shown that the account can be taken into drawdown multiple times and pulled out still, not pulled out the account in any Yeah, so far, I do agree with him. Like you said, he is, there is technically a chance that he is just lucky for those couple of months and he really doesn't know how to trade, but with the frequency or the amount of trades he has taken, it is hard to um, disagree with that statement. It'd be different if it was one lucky trade or one lucky trade that brought him out of drawdown and things like that. But as you can see, there were many different orders being placed. So the likelihood of that being lucky, lucky is very low. I did not over trade with leverage that would be unreasonable because I'm using the margin of the TM trade forced on me. I can only do one contract. So one contract with, in my opinion, again, this is all I'm trying to address. Okay. What is reasonable for a new student that goes from demo to live trading? In my opinion, and I said this before, I said it many times throughout my videos, but both in mentorship grade or public YouTube. And when I was on baby pips and I did it in text, you posted on the forum. I said this multiple times. What I believe is reasonable and realistic, I just showed you. I pushed the button. Okay. Um, this is money that I have to pay taxes on, obviously. I pay commission costs. It's not hindsight. The statements you have now are not little hands. Okay. <laughs> so understand that just because I can do these types of things, I'm not obligated to. But I'm willing to. If it helps one person overcome their concern about the lies and things that are said about me, if that's what I have accomplished by doing this, like I posted on my community this then it's worth it. It'll be worth it because you will eventually get to where you want to be at, and then you'll reach out to me and say, thank you very much for doing what you did. And then I'll be appreciative, and I'll say, congratulations, and that'll be it. You're not sending me money. I'm not trying to sell you a program to use. I'm not promising you a ball and chain. So if you have to use this, you have to pay for it, you have to you know, stay in contact with me, or it won't work anymore. I'm giving you independence. I'm giving you financial literacy. And I just want to see what all you do. Like, I'm genuinely interested in that. I want to see what all of you can accomplish with it. It's fascinating to me. So, here we are. We're at that crossroads again, the 2022 crossroads, where there's more evidence and more proof supplied by the OICT, dispelling the rumors and myths and lies with hard facts. I use the broker that the young lady from Talking Options push the button. You gotta push the button, baby. Well, they gotta push the button. Be so, so far, he isn't claiming that you will be as profitable as him, or he's not saying that you can make more money or even less money as him. He is just showing a realistic example or experience that you possibly could go through, especially as he's saying he is limited to one contract. And obviously, buying and selling with one contract is very reasonable. So, you could definitely make more or less. And he isn't here showing you that you will be guaranteed to make this much or not. He is just showing that it is possible and he's just given the proof on what you could potentially expect as well. I'll be pushing the button the rest of this year. And I'm building you a Christmas. Now, I already know you're not going to pay up to 75000 dollars but I just want to be good on my promise to you. But you said you want to see 12 months of live trading statements. Okay, well, here's three of them. The next one will be coming as we go through each month. They'll be documented. And we get to Christmas. It's going to be December to remember. Not just for her, but for a special individual. I got something that's really, really nice. It's almost like a birthday present, too. Mm -hmm. So, when you see things like this, understand I'm not being my chest. This is nothing. Nothing. Extreme flavors don't sell that. In eight weeks, with doing all kinds of things, answering questions that are given to you by my students, can you show how to do this? Can you show how to do that? It's not important for all those things to be shown here. I only promise you that I'll show you live results. Now, I can sit down and say, okay, this is what the model suggests I should do. And this is what I should do in the morning. This is going to be my routine. And I'm going to be looking for this. I'm going to execute on that idea. And I'm going to manage the position. I'm going to take a trade. And it's either going to pay out or it's not. And if it doesn't pay out, then I'll have to mitigate that loss. I will do that with this account. And it will be shown on this YouTube channel. But I want you to take what I'm supplying this year and give me the comfort of going back to teaching openly in demo and not have any qualms about that. Okay? The things I can do in demo, I can do here. Period. Okay? Does it make you more money? Did you get a deposit into your trading account by me showing you what I did with a lot of account here? No. Did it improve your trading? No. Did it prove that I don't blow the account out in 90 days, guaranteed, <laughs> with no contract order? No. Does it prove that at all? I've dispelled that here. Like I promised I would. It's the same account. It's the way a regular broker. And yes, there's some time for going on, but you have to record your trades. And honestly, uh, during the, the drawdown periods, they really didn't mess with me at all. But in March, that day where they were rejecting my orders, I literally tried to log in with my cell phone, another laptop, and a tablet, all of which they were saying it was in account. And or invalid symbol. I was trading directly from the chart in TD Ameritrade in the Picture platform. So it can't be invalid symbol. It can't be invalid account because I'm literally executing right off the chart. Then that particular day, the buy that market and sell market hot buttons. Once I saw the platform, I pressed the button to try to get into the trade going in the market. 99 percent of executions that you watched here. All market orders. All market. Okay, market, market now. Only a few of them were limited and such. That particular day in March, where they were rejecting my orders. Once I got in the trade, it was not the best position for me to be in, but I took it and said, okay, I'm gonna complain about that. The trade dropped in my favor. And then I wanted to put a limit order in. It wouldn't let me do it. And I said, okay, well, I'm not sure what's going on here. Let me just exit it out right now and just buy the market cover. No, it was rejected, rejected, rejected. I'm like, okay, something's wrong here. I knew that news was coming out, and I didn't want to get caught in that backdraft, and they'd come back against me and give up the money here, and somehow I was in the profit. So I'm trying to close it just to make the bad watch game. They won't let me do it. So now I'm doing it myself, and I'm logging in there. It's rejecting it there, too. I'm like, oh, here we go. When I said I was doing little stuff, I was constantly putting in orders, orders, orders. It's one contract, okay? What I'm judging is the length of time before that broker bebooks me. And once you're bebooked, you'll have things where there's a delay for execution from when you put it in the trade, and there's a lag before you actually get in, or when you try to get out, it lags, and then you get those problems because they know you're not going to be around much longer. So they're just going to take you to your grade quicker. That's my opinion, okay? But here I am trying to get out of trade, and they so I'm trying to put a stop loss in so that way it goes up there to a point at which I'm willing to accept the fact that it's not going to let me down where I want to get out of it because this level, at least I'm walking out something. They're going to be that here. 
So I go to press the flatten button. Just click that and it fills everything. It's grayed out now. When I say grayed out, usually you're looking at top buttons. They're vibrant. They're right there. You click on them. The flatten button is grayed out. It's there, but I can't execute them. I can't click it. It's unclickable. So I'm thinking, okay, let me go over my laptop. And this is all happening in like minutes, like one, two, three minutes. Now I'm thinking, oh no, because something's going to come out. You need to drop a bomb somewhere. You know, all this Ukraine stuff. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to be caught in a ripped and it's going to rip my face off. Finally, I said, no, I'm going to use this workout. And I clicked on it and said, hey, you know, why is my trades not executing? I just want you to know. You can see it in the portion of this video. I'm actually communicating with them saying, I record my trades and I'm, I got all of this documented. So whatever happens, <laughs> you're going to be good on this. But I'm basically saying, but the representative was very cordial. Um, there was no transaction of exchanges between us that was not recorded. He didn't record it. I was satisfied with what he had told me at that point. But basically, he was assuring me that there was some disconnection between the broker, their broker, and the CME. Now, my only issue with that is I know a lot of people, and I know a lot of people that were into the Ameritrade, and a lot of people that trade other brokers that trade these instruments, the index features. And no one else had connected issues that I know of. So my question to you is in the comment section, on that particular day, did you have any problems having connection issues trading that time of day? Just curious. Um, now, am I beating up on TD Ameritrade? No. This is what's going to happen next if you do it online, okay? Um, there are hard stores I have with FCM, and I would never recommend trading with them. But as far as TD Ameritrade, uh, if you want to score hard, which is going to sound like winning, just sell those things to them, they made good on their issue, and they were willing to work with me in regards to giving me a better exit fill. But I actually got a better exit fill as soon as they allowed me to go through once I was pushing that support pattern for months and trades. Surprisingly, when I hit the cover, you know, buy back, they went straight through. And they were saying they had a change So apart from that, and in one other instance where the hot buttons were not working, okay, in other words, the buy market, sell market, and flatten buttons, they were predominantly what I was using when I was doing all these trades. So right here, I believe what he's saying is he's trying to execute trades, whether it's opening position or I think in this case specifically trying to close position, but TD Ameritrade wasn't allowing him to. And he, I believe he's kind of insinuating that he is skeptical of the reason behind it. Since he knows a lot of people that trade with that specific broker through CME and do not have the same issues. But he's also saying that the support person that he was talking to um, was very helpful and cordial. And maybe the fact that he stated to the support guy that he has recorded everything and is basically documenting everything. So if anything happens to his trades where... If he's in a losing position when he wanted to close his trade, he kind of has the proof that he was trying to close that position, of course, and maybe that potentially caused the support guy to actually help him out because obviously they're trying to cover themselves if they truly are intentionally doing this. So, so far, I don't think he's claiming that they are intentionally doing it, but he kind of is insinuating it, maybe due to the fact that, you know, he thinks that he is, and not in a negative way, but he thinks he is understanding the market in a way that's kind of unfavorable to, you know, the brokers and stuff. But like I said, that's just me kind of getting the, what I'm kind of seeing out of it, but I'm not too sure if that's exactly what he's saying so far. I don't want to put a lot into it because I'm not trying to run up a rise up. I'm not trying to do a competition. I'm just showing lots of transactions. I'm showing uh, short-term periods of drawdown and correction of that. You just one contract. Okay, showing proof of profitability, showing that, you know, I don't know where all of you are you know, from a financial stance. I don't know. How many of you are millionaires? I don't know how many of you are poor. Don't you have the money you put into you know these offshore forex accounts that will take you fifty bucks from you, which I don't think you should do by the way. But the point is, I don't know what, where you all are financially. But it's my opinion, okay? It's my opinion that in eight weeks, if you make twenty five thousand dollars, that's pretty good. You're on track to do a six figure year. That is, in my opinion, what I believe. Me personally, if a student listens to the things I tell them to do, practices exactly how I talk and teach and present and all these drills and the back testing and the journaling, all these things, if you do all of those things, I firmly believe. I believe this with all of my being that you can potentially earn six figures your first training year. Will the majority of you do that? Absolutely not. <laughs> that's not what you just said, right? I believe it's possible, but you are going to be the problem. You're not going to listen. You're going to do a lot of things I was showing here. You're going to do days where you do lots and lots of trades. Sometimes they'll work in your favor. Sometimes you'll be able to eat out the ability to get back your loss. In you know, other days, it just gets worse. So avoid those things. Don't do lots of trades. Don't think you have lots of accounts. Or not lots of accounts, but like contracts. In other words, the, the flavor of the, the present one, you know, you're not a hot shot on the trade with the deep discount broker. You know, unless you're trading in two. So kind of like I was saying earlier, I think he's just showing the reality behind trading, even though he doesn't want to trade as much as he was showing. He is still being vulnerable and open to show you that there are days where he is over trading. But the goal is to not consistently do that. If you do find yourself in that position, you definitely need to correct yourself and correct that trading activity the following day by following your plans or following your rules and minimizing those trades. What you guys margin, what you just learned, shot. Well, the shortest way out of this party and blowing your account is over leveraging. And you have to respect the level of equity that's in your account. If you have no regard for the amount of money you have in your account, you're going to blow it. You're going to lose it and you're going to do it in stunning fashion. So the way you protect that from occurring is you trade with one contract until you develop rigid self-control. I mean, you got to go in there saying, okay, I got one contract. You can listen, Thousand dollars a day. I'm quite certain that the majority of you are not earning that every job. You're not. Now, there's only probably more than I have a lot of affluent students, but the majority of you, I'm not talking down to you because I came from jobs that were menial. But to get a thousand dollars a day and you get that and you stop, that's a good living, folks. That's a real, real good living. And what's coming just in the offing right now, just over the horizon, is ugly, hard times. And I'm here to help all of you, hopefully, weather that. Am I going to help every single one of you? No. It's my goal to believe me. I'm trying to do everything I can to make it possible for you to have this skill set. I'm trying to convince you that, look, this is real money. I'm not going to get here. Now, there's a couple of trades in here last year, but my was one of the bond trades where I could literally made ten thousand. So yeah, so far I do agree if you're first starting out, um, you do want to minimize the amount of contracts or lots if you're trading Forex. For sure, you do want to get the feel of real money and having that real risk in the market. 
but you definitely don't want to over leverage. You don't want to disregard the uh, equity that you have in your account. So if you're trading Forex, it probably makes sense to drop 0.1s or even 0.01s. And if you're trading futures, definitely only use one contract until you build that consistency, build that um, confidence in your trading, build that skill set, and then you can progress from there. But he is showing here you don't need the big contracts or big lot sizes to make good money. I didn't know trade, but this is there for a reference point. I could do this, <laughs> but I said, no, I'm going to stick to just trading in the futures. I didn't mistake in here. I was looking at a Q chart and I had a chart up on TD Ameritrade and I went back and I was looking at trade stations. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the platform. And then I came back to the chart and I saw something setting up on the Q. I thought the chart set for NASDAQ. So I went in and taking a trade with, in my mind, I thought it was NASDAQ, but it was Q. So I got in the trade, I realized, oh no, I'm not going to see him stop. <laughs> so I mean, that, so you can see that actually occurring in the statements. So that's actually a trade repair there. Um, but it's, it's been fun, obviously. Uh, but I'd love to get to the point where I can sit on YouTube and discuss tape reading. Okay. Now I know right away, some of you are going to say, oh, he's worth it. stays worth it. My session part, I want you to know that I'm not going to sit down on YouTube. Okay. And I know to many of you, this is going to be deflating because I know a lot of you want to piggyback everything you see me do. Now look at this account. I did this this way. So that way when I go into live sessions and I'm sitting here on YouTube, okay, and I'm commenting on what I think I see in price action, I want you to remember all the transactions I showed you. You don't know what I'm going to be showing that particular day. You don't know what I'm illustrating. You don't know if I'm setting up the situation where it could be I'm teaching you drawdown in mitigation. I don't want any of you to take back on me. I don't want you thinking that it's reasonable. I don't think that any trader should be after trying to copy someone else. Because you have no idea the problem psychologically that creates. Internally, it creates a dependency that I'm absolutely against. I don't want any of you to dependent on me. My lessons are meant to make you absolutely independent. There's no tethering to me. Nothing. You learn from me. I need you independent. Free thinker. You can engage in price action. And you can go out your way. There is no software program that connects you to me. There's no continuous. You pay me, or you're no longer in a position where you pay money. No, 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 no. You learn. You adopt that skill. You find your model in that, and then you blossom. Bloom where you're planted. But when I start doing these live sessions, and then I'm asking, what's the email? I'm trying to get OBS to sync with my YouTube channel, and I obviously don't know what the hell I'm doing. So, if any of you would be so kind <laughs> to help me, uh, I could really use that assistance because I know it's probably something very simple. And I used to do live sessions on YouTube, but for whatever reason, I cannot get my YouTube channel to connect to OBS. I followed all the tutorials, I did all the, you know, the videos they have on YouTube that walk you through the whole process, but they won't let me do it. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I'm asking you as a community that if you're a live streamer or whatever, um, if you could do some partnership and kind of like say, hey, look, in front of section, did you try this or check this? I really appreciate your assistance in that regard. But I do want to get out here and talk about what I think. Yeah. So I do agree with what he's saying. It is tough for a newer trader. Definitely still learning. You do want to see things done in live time because it definitely can be beneficial for the learning process. At the same time, I also understand that he doesn't want us to depend on him. As a trader, you, at the end of the day, you want to be independent. You don't want to sit around and just be taking signals and not really learning the process. Um, for several reasons, you want to be independent on your own, make your own money. That's the ultimate reason why we want to do it. Be basically be our own boss, trade when we want and not depend on anybody else. So if you're just piggybacking on other people, obviously that contradicts what we just said or what we want for ourselves. At the same time, um, I'm sure he didn't really say this exactly, but from a psychological perspective, it's it's a you versus you game. And if you are depending on somebody else and they lose, you take away the blame on yourself. It's easy to point the finger at the person that you were copying. So he wants us to be independent, allow ourselves to take responsibility for our own actions, learn from our own actions and go from there. But at the same time, I do sympathize for the traders that are still learning and want to see that live process because it definitely can be beneficial. It also is a way to prove the person that you're learning from is very reliable. But what he's shown here, he's already shown the results that um, that basically show that he is profitable and knows what he is doing. So there, even though you may have that desire to kind of try to validate his success and see if he truly is the real deal, he is just basically saying, one, he doesn't owe that to you. He's already kind of shown it. And also, he doesn't want you to be independent on him. It's going to happen in price action. Before it happens, I'm not going to be pushing a button, folks. I'm not going to do that in front of you. But I want you to understand what it takes to read the tape, okay? Knowing what buys should look like. How to engage and practice by tape reading in these environments. So that way you can start to you know, get a better feel for where the market's likely to draw to. When it stalls before it starts to make its run. And you start learning that. Too many of my students over the years have jumped over that step and just went into demo training. You know, I, read, I read the instructions. I read the ICT manual about this or that. And I can understand it. So they go back and start training with and they did not put the time in working. Writing 10 pages in a notebook, that is not the work. You scribble. Yes, you've been doodling, okay? You're doodle I'm not raising an army of doodle I'm raising an army of assassins, okay? Market assassins. You don't go in with just some willy-nilly approach. We go in with absolute ruthless focus. We're looking at what we're looking for. And if it's in there, we're going to spot it. And then we take it in. And like the ball is free, my game are value of the ball in like this freaking forty hundred dollars program I bought. But you can't skip the parts. That I tell you the most important. And learning how to read the tape. What does that mean? That means seeing price action, getting in sync with it, and getting a read on what it's likely to do right now. What's it going to go for next? Is it going to run higher? Is it going to reach a specific level? Higher than the market price right now, or is it going to reach lower? And if you have a bias that is bullish and it starts to run lower, what makes that bias null and void now? When can you change gears and expect things to go the opposite direction? That's a skill set that you have to acquire by reading price. And that means no pushing of any buttons. That means just studying and looking at price. And yes, in the beginning, it feels aimless. It feels pointless. It feels like you're wasting your time. But once I get all this stuff set up, you're going to see how consistently we can observe where price is likely to go. Once you understand that, the folks in this community, there's a few of them that still struggle with my private membership too. That means bias. 
they haven't done this part. Okay, so because I'm going to be doing it publicly, you all have the benefit of being part of it, but they also will be here too. And I'm hoping that I have drove them to a point where this is all we're going to do. This is what we're looking at. We're looking at bias. We're looking at uh, kind of a general expectation for that training day. Uh, here's it. Hello, I think it's a good level of being responsive to or being drawn to. And then you study that. Now, some of you that are brand new, absolutely brand new, you hear these types of things and say, ugh, oh, I'm unsatisfying. Good. Goodbye. Have a good day. Because you are never going to learn how to do this. That's your mindset. Seeing down with someone that knows how to read price action and be able to decipher what it is it's trying to do in terms of engineer a narrative or a collective opinion in the marketplace or what is coming for your sentiment. So if you have an idea of reading when price is likely to do that, then you can anticipate what well, manipulation. Once that manipulation happens, that's your invitation to engage price. But there's this huge chasm that exists that many of you, because you don't understand that it exists, you think that, well, there's no real separation between looking at a video that he produces and teaching he shows an example once or twice. So therefore, I understand what you did there. I can see that rule. I can see that candles up. I can see that candles down. 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 I can because you have completely omitted one of the most important factors to development, which is understanding the take. You have to know what this price action is likely to do. And you can't get that from a trading book, folks. You don't get static images. So you have to learn from someone that's showing you organic price action, where it's literally living and reading on the chart right there in front of all of you at the same time, and you observe these things live. That's how you learn how to do this most efficiently. Now, I don't have a timeline when this is going to occur, but I want to do it you know, in the next month or so, and then do one or two of them a week. What days will I choose? It'll be days I have a new behind that music and driver in the morning session, or if it's like FOMC, then actually we can stand and we can do that. That is not an invitation to trade FOMC, but I want you to understand how the market works with the existing liquidity, how liquidity, and how it delivers as a result of these high coming. Okay? So hopefully. This has done at least a little bit of help in terms of those that are out there wondering, I see, can you really trade on that account? Can you double an account? Can you take an account from drawdown up? Can you do it with just one contract? Yes, yes, and yes. So, I'm going to obviously work with this account the rest of the year with the expectation that this is what I truly believe in my heart, that a diligent student, first year in, you know, freshman in the I believe here what he is saying is, if you are a trader, a student, just trying to piggyback off of somebody else, specifically him, you might as well leave now because he is not just trying to carry your hand throughout the process. Um, you need the mindset to be willing to put in the work. Just because you understand what a fair value gap is, just because you understand what an order block is and all the concepts that he'll be going over, doesn't mean that you will be successful just by understanding the concepts. Some people will think that they understand the concepts and just merely trade both their account and get frustrated. But what is needed is the experience, the dedication to put the time in to understand everything and understand how to read the charts as he is describing by tape reading. And and yeah, just having that different mindset is what is going to help you be a successful trader. And if you have the mindset of, oh, he's not gonna do things live, I'm out of here, then most likely you're not the fit for this specific type of um, education he's giving. Or he might even say that to be a trader in general because you need to be you need to have the mindset that you are willing to put in the work and the time and the effort, the dedication, all that good stuff to become a profitable or a successful trader. In my trading, <laughs> what they would expect or should expect as a high end. Now, that, that's what I'm showing. I'm showing a high end. This is the highest I would expect. Now, does that mean if you pay for this, that's a failure? I would hope you wouldn't think that. And if, let's say, the first three months or the first six months of your life, you are struggling breaking trading, is that a failure? No. That's actually a very good thing. Because if you're unable to blow out, but you just can't find your group yet, and all those wiggle sites, you're not making a little bit of money, then you erode a little bit, and you make a little bit again, and erode again, you're back and breaking, you're just below where you started, and you have another run up, and you're like, you turn the corner, and then you lose that again, you're back and you're restarting. That's actually a very good foundation. I've had very good results for students that came to me with that type of background. The struggle breaking trader. They have been, in my opinion, in the last six years through mentorship, they have been the best. Now, before I started doing paid mentorship, which I'm not doing anymore, I'm doing mentorship right now, I'm teaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching, right? So, when I first started doing paid mentorship, my opinion, and all the students that went through the mentorship group, they know that I stated that the best students I believe are ones that come to me that I have a detail. I'm just kidding. And about halfway through the last six years or so, um, that changed my opinion too. I think it's better to have someone that has completely ruined themselves financially using retail logic, because then you can understand how you felt like it. But now, my opinion as a mentor looking back, my better students are the ones that have come to me with a break even where they aren't necessarily blowing out something kept them from just completely blowing out and they reserve themselves to the point where they didn't overtrade, push and push and push until they found something that does it. So, they have established some measure of self control, which is absolutely essential. You need to have that. If you don't have a way to control yourself, number one, say like this. If you're a hothead and you blow up real quick and it's like a tornado is going to release and you lose control, you're probably going to be a trader that has really hard time holding on to that really and you end up blowing up and probably blowing your accounts. If you're someone that's more even toned or, well, mild mannered, much like most of the women that I've trained, they, they have that built in tendency where they're just steady, they just, you know, they go with it. They didn't work this time, but I'm going to stick to the process and they just need one blow their account. Uh, it doesn't mean you know, I have students where they get in there and they get money and they get all that and a little bit more. That occurs obviously. But your personality is going to translate into the end result of your trading. So it's important that your trading style is joined at that same level of expectation. So are you a real quick, sudden, short term, short fuse kind of person? Then day trading you are going to flourish in that. But if you are, Someone that doesn't like to be making that decision, you need a little bit more to make your uh, mind about something. You're probably going to be a day trader, not, not a day trader. You're probably going to be a position trader. You're a day trader. So, I don't know what all of you are in that regard. You have to tell me what that is. But if you can take all these things that I'm laying in front of you, okay, these are all hard line questions you're going to have to ask yourself. Because if you are at a stage where you've been doing them and you feel consistently able to go in and find something that's with that account, don't fall into the expectation that, well, all I'm going to do is put money into that account and it's going to be just that easy because it's not. It's not going to happen like that. Because your interest in seeing that end result have a dollar sign and an increase in the equity is going to be a feeling. If you've never felt that yet, it is a weird feeling. It's even worse when you put the first trade on and the trade starts against you because now you're thinking, I don't want my first trade to be a losing trade. Who cares? If you do that type of thinking, you're going to hold that trade and that's toxic thinking. You're wasting mental capital. Wasting mental capital. You're holding on to something that you no longer believe in. So why are you in trade still? Think, folks. If you've ever traded lifelines and you felt that, you're in something, and now you're hoping. It's become religious now. You're in, a, you're in prayer. You're talking to God. You want somebody to love you. You fix the problem that you're in. That's religious trade. We don't believe in trade. We don't do that. So as soon as you lose confidence in why you're in trade, and it becomes, I hope you guys are one for myself, as soon as that happens, you have my permission and instruction to trade. Because you're no longer in control of yourself. You don't have a disconnect. You're not indifferent to trade. You are absolutely emotionally attached to trade. You gotta remove that. And the only way you do that is turning. Okay? You gotta cut these tr
I'm being yours. How would you weather that? Are you gonna get to give up those things? Are you that as well? You know? At the same time, you're going to work one day and do five tires and muscle pounds a week because I've got your weight and paper tires and money in my pocket. So, I'm going to be money this day for the next two days. Did I pay for all these things to get fixed? Should you just quit your job and do five tires? Of course not. Should you blow up and take out your costume and get on the fence? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, if, if you take a look at these transactions and you feel uncomfortable, the thing that you feel uncomfortable with is your account. That shows you your infancy. That shows you that you are worried about the money versus the process. Because if you follow a process that's already established itself as effective, the end result should be gain equity. Not everyday profitability. I didn't trade every single day. In fact, I proved by limiting your exposure using this as a teaching approach. How you go in and make yourself likely to be consistent and profit for the first year or going forward into where your career takes you? Have goals. Have realistic goals. When you reach them, stop. Let the month close. Just because there's two other weeks or three weeks left in the month and you make 25% and your goal is 20%, why, pray tell, do you want to go in and risk losing what you've already nailed down for that month? You have a consistency when you look back and say, okay, in January, what was my return? 20%. Great. In February, what was my return? 31%. Great. March, what was my return? 25%. Great. Every day, you're working towards that monthly goal. When you get it, you stop. It's not, well, I got it real easy and really quick, so that means I'm probably going to keep pushing it. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's how everybody blows out because they allow these momentary periods where it feels like you have dialed in. You got a direct line to Jesus. Jesus is on the main line. He's giving you guidance and you got every possible way to trade ahead of you. And then something happens. You lose your trade. And you lose your mind. Push the button for no real reason. You're just hoping something better happens in the last five inches. Are you in control of that curse? No. Is your broker going to help you stop? No. Is your spouse? Probably not. You're not going to tell them you're down five or seven different trades. You lose money. You're not going to do that. So what do you do? You own it. You take responsibility and say, This is the one. I got to stop today. See, you have to listen to me. Are you losing money? You must have to happen to make money. You're not listening to these people. They say, Oh, you're on a hot roll. When you're in a real good period, push it. Push your edge. I'm telling you, folks. I'm telling you, I would put millions of dollars on this. I've seen so many people on Twitter pretend to know what they're talking about. Okay? And say, You got to push your edge. When you're making money, you keep pushing. No, you don't. When you have a goal and it's realistic, you reach it, you stop. Period. That's the secret to consistency and longevity, folks. We're not talking about competition training. See, some of you think about what you've seen in your demo accounts. And you think, well, you know, do that with this. What is that? Something that's responsible as an educator, <clears throat> teaching someone, showing for the first time in all of my teaching, publicly on YouTube, system. All right. So far, I somewhat agree and somewhat disagree. I definitely think it is good to have a goal. And once you reach that goal, you know, you've obviously reached that goal. So why are you going to keep pushing it? Especially if you're going at it from a perspective of you're on a hot streak and you're going to continue your luck and continue pushing it. I definitely feel, I think if you have that mindset, that's definitely not a good mindset to have, especially as he was stating from a psychological perspective, if you are losing your confidence from losing trades and then you're trying to um, chase that original balance that you were at, if you're doing anything like that in a negative way, then that's probably not a good thing to do. But if you are in control of your emotions, I don't see a reason why you would not continue like for example what's the difference between say your your third week into the month you've hit your monthly profit target what's the difference between trading the next day versus trading in seven days i don't see what the difference is um if anything it could be a good psychological break to know that you hit your profit target and you want to take a break for the next week and then hit the markets hard coming in that following month so taking that time off might be beneficial but if you are in control of your emotions and you're sticking to your trading plan. I don't see anything wrong with continuing to trade. It's just if you have the mindset, if you have a negative mindset going into it and trying to, you know, like I said, keep that hot streak going, keep that lucky streak going and things like that, that is probably not a good thing to do. It's 2010, as the quote-unquote forex guru. None of you saw me trading my account. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly. I want you to do it with the right mindset. I don't want you thinking the wrong things, trying to do foolish things. I want you to have all the advantages. Know what's likely to occur, what problems may arise, and then how to correct that. How do you navigate these feelings and emotions and psychological pools that's going to be yanking on you when you're going to buy an account? You're going to see, getting a trade, now there's real money in there. And it's coming in and out of your account. If you've never seen that occur because you're in a demo account, there's no connection. There's no, there's no affinity towards the end result, really, when it's a losing trade because it was your purpose to that pain that's taking it from you. But strangely enough, the winning trade makes you feel superhuman. In live trading, it's about what's sort. You feel, yes, excited that you're in trade and fearful at the same time. But if you start feeling anxiety while you're in trade, you have to remind yourself that you're following the system and is this market still going forward with the expectation you have you first put the trade on? If it isn't, and now you're feeling anxiety, why are you in it? Get out of it. What happens about the other guys? It runs my pocket You learn something from that, but you don't fill your brain up with toxic memories of going through that pain and suffering. You gradually work into that. Now, do you do this forever? No. At some point, you're going to press into that. I know how to press into that and stay the trade because you've done so many examples and executions of getting the trade, overcoming fear of executing the entry. Once that execution is done, close it. Just get out of it. It's that way it trains you. Yes, you push the button. Now you can see, how do you help that trade? This is what you would have seen come from it. Did it follow all the logic behind the trade? Did you thought we were going to anticipate seeing come to fruition? It does or it doesn't. That's the best thing you can do, folks. Either do or you don't. And you gradually press into that experience. And when you do it over time, how much time will it take? I don't know. How long you're afraid. You don't want to go out there and start engaging prices because if you don't see the way you think you should, you can feel like you fail or waste your time. That's the first extreme as well. So you have to get in this mindset that you have to engage. You can do it gradually. You can do it where you just ease your toe with water, okay? Then up to your heel, up to your ankle, and then chin, and all of a sudden you're needing to You can do it that way. I'm going to show you what actual time trade looks like. Come here. First of all, we have a desk. And we have a computer, okay? Some of you may require that. Or you say, okay, I'm going to get back to the fire. I'm going to get in and just do the entry and whatever happens happens. I'm not going to be nuts about it. I'm not going to go into the entry. 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 Structure approach that answers all of that. And that's why I stated here in the sort of the end of the video. When you go into your live trading, you're going to learn a lot about yourself that you did not want to recognize when you were in demo. And it's going to be ugly characteristics that you like to pretend never existed. It's going to prove to you are you organized? Are you patient? Are you responsible about your own actions? Are you following the rules? 
most of those characteristics are not attributes that are associated with a new trigger. They're forged, they're developed over time. They, they don't just exist in a new trigger because they never, well, own them. Because they're skills they have to be acquired through rigid approaches to following rules and feeling the pain and suffering when you don't follow rules. So, hopefully, like I said, I've done a service to you while I'm doing this little task here. Um, does it answer everything that's ever going to arise at ICT? With that one there, I definitely agree. Training from demo versus real capital is a big change. You could definitely execute things very flawlessly on demo, but you are missing all of the psychological and emotional components with trading. But when you are trading with real money, then you get the real psychological effects. You get the real emotional effects and you have to really face yourself one-on-one, -on -one, face your inner thoughts, face your inner you and figure out why you think the way you think, why you do the things you do and all that good stuff. So yeah, so just be very aware that trading on demo is very different than live. In the SD talk, something. No. It wasn't. I am confident that somebody needs to see this and now feels empowered because, of it. because they see that even with one contract, even with imperfection, even with periods of drawdown, doubling the account in eight weeks, that's pretty good. That's, that's a really good objective to strive for. Do, do you go out trying to do that now? But this is, in my opinion, first year, we're in the live account world and trading online funds. This is what I think is the highest that anybody should expect. Now, where you fall in this spectrum from either break even to this, that's your place and you'll grow from that. Don't let me, don't let anything I may say in a video, don't let anyone else judge you or make you feel like that's not significant enough. Because your first three months of trading, that's going to give you a foundation and show you where your problem areas are. Where do you need to work on? Is it your entries? Is it executing when you see this stuff? Are you, are you waiting around? Are you delaying because of fear? What is that deeper fear? What are you afraid of? If you're afraid of execution, then you just got to get here and start executing. You just touch the button. When you take this button to go higher, when I'm going to start, try to trade all the short customers, and yes, it costs money. Yes, you might take losing trades, but you're pressing the button to complete the decision by yourself. You don't care about the outcome. You get in, you go for 30 seconds and you get out. And you wait till the next hour. You wait for one minute to swing low, and you buy again. It's not teaching you anything except for getting over the anxiety of getting trade and not worrying about what the outcome's going to be. That's how I did it, folks. That's how I did this. I was fearful. 1992, 1993, I had so much anxiety about getting in initially. And so I did these types of things. And I didn't care. I was not afraid at all getting in. But I was afraid I was going to miss the best exit. And truth be told, I've been very honest with you. I was probably in the partnership. My weak point is the exits. I can get really good exits, but I'm not satisfied with my profession. And that's going to be a pursuit of my life. I'm probably never going to hit that market. It's not aiming for it, right? So you're going to have to find your own foundation in the first three months. You have to do everything you can to weather the first three months because statistics are pretty apparent that the majority of new traders rush in. So far, yes, I do believe uh, or I do like this part because he's being very encouraging. He's basically saying just because he made X amount doesn't mean you have to make that much. Any progress is good progress, even if you are hitting break even months after months. That is still great progress. At the end of the day, don't worry about what he's doing. Don't worry about what anyone's doing, especially nowadays with social media. We always compare ourselves to other people. And honestly, sometimes we don't even know if they're telling the truth and we're just kind of blindlessly or blindly um, comparing ourselves when in reality, it really isn't, isn't, isn't even a fair comparison. So at the end of the day, it's you versus you, focus on you. And as long as you're progressing, any progress is good progress. They don't have a plan. They don't have a model that they're really following. They have no self-control. They have no rules in place. No processes that get you through periods of adverse results. You know, when you're, when you're not able to find your footing, you're getting into losing trades, or you're, you're trading from that and not you're not you're not your profit. All these things start going on your time. So unless you have a way to have an answer for that person, you need it for you. And the only way you get that is by being in the trenches, pressing the button. You got to do that part. And that's why you don't want to trade a lot of money. You don't go out and start with twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay, you start with a very small account. Okay, and you work with a market that allows you to trade it with less equity. These markets, and I'll say this in the video, I promise you, less than that. In the last years of my life, there's been years that were hard, and there were years that were absolutely easy to read. Really, really easy. The last year and a half or so, 18, 19 months, have been the hardest for me personally. Because I see all the things that's going on around the world, all the stuff that they want to put in their arms, the things they want to put us through and wear on our face, the places we couldn't go, you know, the way the economy has been affected, all these things, and believe me, you know what I'm talking about. All these things had a great impact psychologically because none of us have ever been where we are right now. The markets, the business marketplace, every trade right there, we have never seen markets like this again. They're doing things that are very reactive to news or anticipating something, okay? And I want you to understand that if you've had trouble in the last 19 months or so, let's talk to you, okay? You're in the company. I have been very reserved the last two years. And I see a lot of people out there claiming that you're killing this and killing that. And I would love for you to do this and sit down and show what you've been doing. And you know, obviously, obviously, but if you're out there saying you killed it, my question is, why don't you show it? You must have already said you do kill it. Show it. Otherwise, I'm going to burn up. Will it get better, technically? I'm hoping it will, but if it doesn't, I still can do what you see here. And this isn't me really trying. Okay? And here comes all your jokes and ego stuff. Mm. I'm not using my best models in this account. I'm literally just doing things that I've taught on this YouTube channel. And I'm doing lots of things that my students have asked me to do and use situations and conditions that they find themselves in and how to navigate that. And with all of those things, still showing that those out there that just have a disdain for me, they have some level of hatred and envy and jealousy. And I get it. Even before 2016, I get it because I invited that kind of stuff. But in 2016, I started teaching and trying to be a little bit more responsible as an educator. I tried to put aside a lot of those things that I used to do as Tom Forty and all the stuff on YouTube, Twitter, and things of that nature. But that's the direction I'm trying to take. I want to be that kind of mentor. I want to be that kind of educator. And I'm not going to stress the issue right now. I know I'm going to not be the solution for everyone. But you're never going to be able to say, that I can't trade. I can't trade. You're never going to say, no, you never see my trade results. Because now you have, you have my statements. You're not going to hands down. And I'm trading with a regular broker. I showed you 100% transparency. I showed you what it looks like with a little negative symbol next to a lot of transactions. You don't have to care. Does that keep this account from doubling? No, absolutely not. And it won't stop yours either if you're in control of yourself. So please, it's been a cycle. And so far, you're not fine. Be safe. All right. Next video, trade psychology and effective journaling. Okay, folks, back. This teaching series is dealing with trade psychology and effective journaling. Okay, trade psychology and effective journaling, the points of focus in this module, community psychological barriers, and my personal opinion and solutions for overcoming them, and effective journaling, how journaling can assist your development. Okay, some major psychological barriers. First on our list is the fear of missing moves. Now, I believe this personally is rooted in not fully understanding what your setup is. Now, you see this globally talked about in seminars, webinars, videos, whatever it is, folks are teaching today, some of them aren't even qualified to be enrolled teacher in my opinion, but we'll leave that for another discussion. The fear of missing moves is rooted in 
your unique self. Now, every church doesn't have a success. It may or may not have an indicator. I personally don't believe that indicator should be a part of your training, but that's just my personal taste. My faith in press action is sufficient enough. But if you have a tool, if you have a method, if you will, that relies on an indicator to give you that by yourself decision for you, then whatever it is, you need to stick with it and know that that's the one you're going to trade. If you have defined that setup in a written form or a training plan, uh, you're not going to have many times that same feeling pain you fight or less organized trade you have. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to be profitable, it just means that we're not going to be fearing this move. Because once you understand the setup, the setup should be directly linked to time and price. There should be time when the setup forms, and there should be a consistency to it. If your pattern doesn't have that and it's rather ambiguous or untimely, you don't know what's going to happen, then you probably don't have a valid setup. And you're going to have hit miss results, and when it wins, you're going to falsely attribute it to your setup when it's really just randomness. So, the real fear of missing moves is obviously to have a well-defined plan and what your setup is. Knowing it intimately will keep you far less anxious about missing a move because you'll know when the results are going to form. This is why I use kill zones. This time element of the trading day, I know what I'm looking for. I know my setup. And if I know what time to occur, I know what days will be to form, and I know it should be either a bullish model or a bearish model, I'm not anxious about missing a move. Even if I do miss that trade, I know when the next one comes to form. Most new fight or non-traders do not have that luxury. They're going to see the all the time, not knowing when it's going to happen or what it is supposed to happen at all for the big trade. Fear of losing. Well, this game, you're not ready for it. Well, this one's going to have you looking for systems that have high accuracy, and there's not a real need for high accuracy. It's wonderful to have it, but the fear of losing comes by not having a plan. And if you follow a plan, you don't have a method that's seen consistency in hindsight and backtesting, and then walk forward with it seeing it working and having momentary lapses of accuracy, you will not have the wherewithal that's necessary to do what is necessary as a trader. That means embrace uncertainty. The ability to do this is not going to be for everyone. And there's going to be a fine line between those individuals that hit this wall that everyone else will hit, and we have to determine for ourselves if this is really right for us. And for some of you, it isn't. No one's going to make a decision for you, but it's important to understand that there is always that element. If you're new to the trader and you're unproven, it may be that trading is for you. You have to more or less rely on someone else to do trading for you, or not trade at all. But if you're going to trade, you can't fear taking a loss. Fearing a loss is many times directly linked to over leveraging and or over trading. Both of those two elements are very easily fixed. Lower your leverage, and you won't be so fearful about taking a loss because it won't hurt you so many times in a row if you have a losing streak. If you slow your frequency down in terms of over trading, again, even if you're not trading high accuracy method or setup, the high frequency won't be quickly eroding your equity. Very simple solution, so otherwise, rather routine problem that comes up in many traders. Intentions between setups. This is going to come by way of infancy as a trader. Just if you have a setup that is profitable and you well organized, you have a well groomed money management strategy, and you know what your setup is, but you're impatient and waiting for it. Or you see the setup forming, but you're trying to get in just before you're really supposed to. In other words, you're looking for a level, you're looking for the 50 level you're buying at, and it's starting at 65, and you just can't stand it, you decide to get in. That's going to be dealt with over time and forging discipline by following the rules in your method. The problem is you don't have the time doing it enough and the experience of trading to know what this is going to require of you. And you're going to have many times previous exposure, either by demo properly, or if you eventually go into live trading, which I'll ever try to tell you to do that because it's a decision that you're not going to make at all. But if you find success, that feeling of rush you get when you make a profitable decision, you won't have it right away as quickly as possible. Many times immediately, as soon as you close the trade or hit your limit order and you're out of the profit, or you've done a little live, or you're you're going to want to go right back again and you're going to jump in before yourselves. And you're going to take things that are necessarily part of yourselves. And I can tell you that as a commodity trader, when I had initial luck back in the early 90s, I would have an idea I wanted to trade, but <laughs> I would also feel that impulse going back in and be a winner again. So I would look at the market and take it less, and I said, I still think it's going to go up, and I would buy it. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I still succumbed to that impulse that, hey, look, you know, I need to be doing something on the charts, and I want to go again, so let me roll the dice and see what happens. That impatience comes by way of your infancy and your lack of experience. Experience is going to teach you one of two things. One, that losing sucks, <laughs> and it's better you try not to lose too much when you do lose. Or experience is going to teach you that you're not perfect, so therefore you have to wait for the best scenarios for your quote unquote luck to be in favor. We don't know if our session will be accurate, but we also don't know if our session will come when we're expecting it to. So forcing it, we're jumping ahead and more anticipating the setup, whereas we're anticipating the next move in price of trading is. It's a statistical guess. Now, with that, there's a measure of uncertainty. And that uncertainty and the waiting side of trading is a cycle of torture. Okay, it's, you can't stand it, especially if you're on the charts. You just want to get a trade already and accept the wider risk if you need it. And that's wrong. You don't want to do that. Demand your price, demand your setup. And by doing so, you'll combat that impatience that resides between setups that novice traders always feel. Fear is not being good enough. So far, I do agree with everything you're saying. Fear of missing moves. I know for me, um, for many years, I was always afraid of missing moves, and that caused me to literally be on the charts almost 24-7, trying to trade Asia, trying to trade London, trying to trade New York. And that is just very taxing on the mind, very taxing from a psych psychological perspective, and understand that the markets will be there tomorrow. They have been there for, or been here for a long time, and they'll be there for a long time in the future. So don't be afraid to miss a move for the day, for the week, for the month. The markets are always there. And fear of losing, this has definitely been one of my biggest psychological bears as well. Because for me, especially seeing a lot of stuff on social media, you never really see the losing side of things. You only see the big wins. You see all of the fancy cars and things like that. So you want to be just like them. So whenever you have a losing trade, you always think it is something on you. At this, um, the same time, it is on you because you are the one that pulled the trigger. But at the same time, we will lose. Nobody has a 100% win rate. People will take losses, and it is okay to take that loss. We just need to learn to be okay with taking that loss. And of course, impatience between setups. Um, definitely want to wait for your setup to come to play, even if it takes days, weeks, months. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. But the idea is, even if you are trying to trade for the day and you do not see a setup, do not force anything especially sometimes when we're on a losing streak and we're trying to make that money back. We're really not patient to make that money back. We want that money back now. So we're trying to push it there. Or even if we're on a winning streak, we think we can continue to roll the dice and find setups that really aren't there. You know, So of course, be patient with your specific setups. Well, this is by art of being on social media. Everyone's going to be better than the next guy. We're going to be trained by the person that's leading the back or they themselves are, you know, the rock star. 
If you are not equipped to handle the Tom Ford that takes place on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, it's probably better for you not to be on it. Now I understand that I have a online presence on Twitter, and I have Facebook, and I have a YouTube channel, but I have thick skin, and I like to engage on Twitter because I like the feedback, I like to see what the responses will be, and I just like to engage. So if you are quickly feeling like you are not sufficient or your learning speed is not up to snuff in terms of what you've seen other people, and many times you see online, they're lying anyway, they may say they have everything together, and they're all you know, completely figured out in terms of what they're doing. Many times the ones they're saying that aren't really as astute as they claim to be, and they're trying to fake it until they make it. So don't let it wear on you too much or be like you're in terms of where you're at in your development, because your report card on your own results, as you'll hear me refer to in the journal section of this video, that's the only thing that matters. It's not anyone else's that matters. It's are you seeing development progress? And by measuring that and by keeping tabs in that in terms of your journal, that's the scorecard really matters. And also, your bottom line is the one that makes the case for really not developing. So, if you're not being good enough, it's simply a game that's uh, between your ears. It's all a trap. So, don't think about being on social media. Don't engage other people. That's what you're doing. The worst thing you can do for you men is to go and do some wrestling about you know, what's better, who's better, how much is you know, a good amount, what you should make in terms of tips. All that stuff is the good type of proverbial measuring contest. You know, who's the bigger man? And it's not about who's the bigger man. It's about surviving long enough so that way you can appreciate and develop as a trader. Yes, 100%. Try not to focus on other people and what their progress is. Um, most of the time, they are faking it, they are lying. So, it is, isn't even a fair comparison. And even if they aren't lying and they are doing better than you, that does not take away from you and what you've done and all the hard work you put in. As long as you are progressing, that is good progress. Focus on yourself. And and yeah, I, I agree with what he said. If you're losing streaks in drawdown, well, this is something directly related to management. And if you're afraid of taking losses in any set or series, and or if your drawdown is because you have no process or protocol in place or will you reach for should you have a loss or a losing streak develop, uh, giving you a teaching to help you flatline your, your losses that way, removes the effects of drawdown and losing streaks. And by implementing something as simple as that, quickly changes your perspective on fear and anxiety about taking losses or single losses. Lack of discipline and following rules. Well, it's in our nature to be human, and I said many times that science says don't walk the grass. Your first impulse is to do what? I'm going to tap into all of that. So, it's like your children, you know, God bless them, you know, I have uh, four boys, and I've literally watched them do these very same things that they should know not to do, but they still do it. Well, when they count, when they work now, we do the same things. We know we should be doing something, but because there's an opportunity to do it, and there's really no one keeping from doing it, you're not doing it. And since you infiltrate or mess around with your trade that you shouldn't, since you do it, that little voice in your head says, I should not be doing this, or don't do this, but you ignore it. You want to see what's going to happen. <laughs> and if you do experiments, okay, do it somewhere else, not in the marketplace. But you have to have discipline, and you have to have rules, and when those rules are made, you have to stick to them. You don't deviate from them. And over time, this forges discipline, and it also serves you well, because you don't have periods of drawdown, you don't have periods of losing trades, and if you don't have the discipline to stick to the very things that will eventually lead to longevity in this business, you're not going to do very well. So discipline comes by forcing yourself to follow the rules, and those rules have to be rigid, they have to be concise, detailed, and not ambiguous. They have a very binary in the sense that you do this, or you do that, or you do nothing at all. And they have to be three conditions for every decision process. Either it's a no, it's a no, or you sit still and do anything. Especially for the next best thing, I think this is one of the biggest problems. It's like Twitter. Whoever's hot right now, whoever's the most attention, by everyone, that's where everyone's going to flock. Okay? And it's always been like that, not since trade you can see how folks that are in love with one concept or one guru or method this month will change teams and go somewhere else in the thought process thinking that this is the better way of doing it or this is something different and it's an implication of something. And I have learned that there's nothing really better for me as a trader so therefore I won't look anymore. I know everything I need to know in terms of price action, I won't post, something I really need. There isn't anything out there that entices me personally. Uh, and like the Bible says, there's nothing more than this one. So if I have a ride that makes sense for me, even if it's not perfect, I don't mean perfect, but I know I have a statistical edge in the things that I do. They're highly accurate, they're very precise, and they're time based. I know when I'm in form. You, if you read the whole majority of individuals that are trading in class, if they can set a time on when they're going to be, they're going to say, I don't think so, I'm going to do that. That's why trading on certain. <laughs> to me, it's not because I know what time of day certain things should happen. I know days of week certain things should happen. So therefore, I'm not interested in that one. I don't care about this move. In fact, it's fruitful for you to take vacation time, schedule time with the marketplace, and do that. And I would suggest to do that even more so if you're hot right now. If you're doing really well, best thing you do is force development in terms of your discipline and also your experience. Force yourself to say, I'm taking a break now. I've been killing it for about 25 minutes in a row for where we're going to be. I'm going to stop trading on the week off. Don't even want to look at it. But don't. By doing that, you're going to prove yourself. There's nothing better than the thing you're doing right now because you understand it. It doesn't have to be mind material. If you found something in another discipline that you've really gravitated towards and you're sensitive to, you can use it. Great. That's awesome. That's all that matters is that you find something that you can make a wager on and then wager that with sound money. It's awesome. You know, whether we're talking about order blocks or ICT breakers or anything else that's out there. None of that stuff really makes price move. And we can't control price once we're in the trade. Once we're in the market, all the control is here. Most of not right now. The market is right. We're going to see in terms of profit loss. So understanding that everyone's going to have losing trades. And the first thing that happens is folks who go through a losing streak and make extreme strong. Then they show their lack of discipline and follow the rules. So they think there's something better out there. Okay, something easier. Something that doesn't have losing streaks. Everything has losing streaks, folks. Believing everything does. No one stays hot for the top forever. There's always going to be some measure around whatever system that you're using. So the best thing you can do is find something that works enough time to warrant investigation and stick with it. Use some money measure and you can turn something really impressive and you may surprise yourself. I really like that one as well. When trading, there's obviously many different ways to trade, and there is no one perfect or best way of trading. There's many people that trade support and resistance and are profitable. Even though for me, I have tried to trade that and was not profitable, doesn't mean someone else can't be. If it is working for you, continue to do that. I know for myself, I've definitely been in a position where I've always been trying to look for the next best thing, taking different courses, going to different um, mentors and things like that, trying to just jump to jump, jump from one um, concept or strategy to another, thinking that it is a strategy on its own. At the same time, there are definitely people that don't know how to teach or are kind of trying to pretend that their strategy works. So it is kind of hard to determine, especially as a new trader, what is a real strategy and what isn't. But for the most part, if you find yourself in a successful position, you should most likely stick to that and not always try to jump to something new, learn something new. And then at this point, or at some point, you're basically just overloaded with knowledge and you really don't know what to think or what to do because different strategies will say different things. And like I said, you just really won't know what to do. So if you find something that works for you, stick to it. Um, I'm not saying don't be open-minded to still be
crazy guru that has a 95% win rate. People that are even 20, 30% win rates are still profitable. Whatever allows you to be profitable at the end of the day, all that really matters or what the goal is to do is to make money. So if we are making money, if we are profitable, we should stick to it. Effective journal. We talk about doing journals every single day. I make a journal entry in my personal journals. At the end of the week, use this on Saturday. I do a weekly login, my personal performance, and what I have seen happen in the previous week. More than I'm reviewing the total week's range. I do this on the two pairs I trade, which is predominantly the euro and the cable pound I don't do a lot of trading in a lot of pairs. I don't get even. I will trade sometimes the Canadian dollar or the dollar. But generally, that's about it. I don't do any more than that. And the reason why is because I actually spend a lot of time planning and investigating certain setups and things I'm looking at. And I want to go through that time and use that time in the most economical way I can. And I don't want to be doing that for 20 pairs. So if I'm going to put the time into doing a sound top down analysis and or review of my own setups, if I'm following 20 pairs, can you realistically do that every single day? You never have any time to do anything else. So I like to live and I can find myself that I ever want to find in these two pairs. But I just trade one because they're closely correlated and if it's my uh, model as far as a short term trader, I like both your dollar and people. And if I want to find something else, maybe my myself in the keyboard fiber, then I'll trade myself in for the Aussie. But I try to make a daily entry without a trade or not, and I give myself an opportunity to stay in a routine. But every single week, I'm doing a complete review of the weekly performance as my trader academy has performed and then an analyst academy. So I'm always giving a voice to the two people that reside in these. Like you are, you are going to be looked at internally as a trader, but it's actually an analyst inside you too. And also a so you have to figure out who's in control of the time when you're doing trading. Many times you don't see it before you enter trade. You always see it after trade. Okay, the ones that pan out really well and you're not feeling a lot of exposure to uncertainty or fear or anxiety, they don't even find that's going to be the analyst because they're focusing on numbers and they're not worried about it. The person that finds themselves excited about the results makes them really good or, I guess, the adverse uh, side of things. They're weighing things in terms of the outcome. That's the trader. They have the gambler, where they're impulsive, they're doing things that are undisciplined and they're pushing more leverage than they should. That's the one you want to keep your eye on, okay? The gambler's in trouble. The trader will take care of himself because the analyst will speak to that side of you through your conscience. But you want to reside in the mindset of the analyst, sticking to what you see in the chart, sticking to what your process is, your, your model, okay? The analyst is going to keep you on the right path. That formation that makes the trader is, is made up of three people. They're all the same person. The analyst, generally, they're the ones that are most The trader is the one that wants the opportunity and the right or wrong uh, measurement. But then you have the gambler who wants the thrill of it all. And it's also the person that takes the hardest in terms of the grief that comes on the trade. And that part of you is not always be negative. It's going to be, well, it's not my fault. It's someone else that calls that. So the gamers are only worried about when it was right and when you need money or when you need money. When it was in your favor, definitely want to consider it. But when it isn't making money for you, the gamers are going to cry, it's going to manifest itself into a spoiled perspective, toxic thinking. So you kind of like want to keep that side of you on a short leash and you don't want to allow it to manifest itself in your journal. I used to follow into the trade. Trading that is really important. So yes, there are different ways of journaling. But one thing I can for sure agree with that I would do for myself or advise other people to do is definitely focus only on a few pairs, preferably um, two. I think that's a really good starting point. You can expand it if you really want to, if you feel comfortable doing so. But I would say no more than five, but ideally two, focus on two. Because if you're focusing on more than two pairs, trying to journal and mark up and analyze more than that is just going to be way too much, especially if you are a new trader. But if you have the experience and um, are able to keep up with more than two, definitely go for it. But for new traders, I agree, only a couple. Um, there were times in my life as a trader that I always wanted to surgery. And I wish I would have stayed on the market those days because I was already anxious. I was already nervous about the outcome of the surgery. So those days I wish I would have had the discipline to not trade. But because I was feeling anxious and helpless because I couldn't fix my son's ailment, I would try to satisfy my anxiety by having a win. Because if I need 100 bucks doing something in the marketplace, it would keep me distracted from what I was feeling in my personal life. So you're going to see that you're losing trades starting directly related to things that are going on in your personal life. And the only way you're going to see that trend for that truism is if you go through your journal and you index all your trades based on a negative mindset or if you're sick, if you're physically ill, probably not a trade. I have my brain, I have my brain sometimes, and I have made mistakes sometimes still times to trade. And of course, it's because nothing worse than feeling like you can have some exploit. Now I have some advice, the best strategy for me right now is to trade. We want to stop doing anything. It's not me at all. It's relaxing to go to quiet. You dark places in the house. It's relaxing. My mind takes care of itself. So, how you feel? Okay, and this is not only physically, but how you feel emotionally. You just have a death in the family. First thing in the world you do is make yourself by rolling dice. You know, you either lost your family, or you and your spouse, or your spouse, or your spouse, or something terrible happens. Okay, you don't want to open yourself up to gambling. Okay, because it's going to come in this environment. You want to be relaxed. You want to have a neutral mindset. You want to feel healthy. You want to have a good exercise program, good healthy diet, and staying active, stretching out. You give yourself hobbies outside of trading because you want to have. A fresh perspective, you want to have a alert mind, you want to have a healthy, fed body. Don't get to the marketplace with a sickly, unrested, which I mentioned before. Sleep is important, you need to have it. Um, because you have jobs and businesses, you need to recuperate. Um, I've been blessed not to need those things because I'm home most of the time doing what I want to do. So sleep for me isn't as needed versus someone that has a business and you know, doing all these things that has a job and you're commuting alone. Okay, if you're rushing home from your job you know, and you have bad experience on the road, you're angry. So what you're going to do, you're going to take it out on the marketplace. You're, you're upset, so you're looking to have a better place by some kind of feeling. And what better feeling is there is to make money. Okay, like winning the lottery. So you're going to do things that you shouldn't do because you're acting impulsively because of the way you feel. So it's important to always be honest with yourself when you journal. I always give myself an opportunity to debrief. Okay, and also release those things. And it's almost because you know what you're doing is the wrong thing to do it and you're acting impulsively because you want to have a Different thing than whatever it is that's bothering you. If you're stressed, you're worried, you're angry, you just want to place that with something. Okay, and so traders, we can clearly see there is the reason they set the market up or down. So all you do is roll dice and just gamble and see what's going on. And our tendency will be different from whatever things that we are stressing over, or anxious about, or mad about, or sad about, or fearful of. All those stimuli will be replaced by on the trade. And I'm going to say, don't ask me again. And it's still my head up with all the wrong things on the trade. So the way you want to avoid that is be sober when you're going into the trade. And also know what it is you're feeling. At the end of the day, when you're done trading, you want to put that into work and write it out. And be honest, if you know you're angry at yourself, if you're angry at your child, or if you're worried about something that's taking place in your job, if you're anxious about losing your job, or if you're angry at someone else's emotion that you didn't get, okay, make sure you do that in your journal by allowing it to come out. Because if you don't release it and put it in your journal, you can see it in text, read it and release it. If you don't do that, your hard work is going to become cancerous to you as a trader. It's going to affect your mind, it's going to affect your performance, and it's not going to always be what you want. Okay, it's going to be many times the opposite of what you're expecting. It's going to have a perspective on your world development. Thank you, Mark. He said it pretty good. Um, definitely keep in mind, journal exactly how you're feeling physically and even emotionally. A lot
definitely take note that you're having a headache. So if you do see a pattern where every time you have some form of a headache, your trading performance goes down, then in the future, whenever you have a headache, you will know to avoid trading. And if you're emotionally sad, angry, whatever the feeling is, mark that up. Because if you have certain feelings of you are very happy and that does reflect that your trading day typically goes um, better than worse on those specific days, then you want to continue doing so. If it negatively affects you on your trading day, then you obviously want to avoid it. Of your concerns, fears, you have on your life, so trade, or trade. Uh, whenever you feel uh, a sense of anxiousness or not trusting the setup, these are beautiful opportunities for you to learn because that's when you're going to swing captures. Take your phone charging, you're going to do that. Swing captures at that very moment in your chart, you're going to be what you're feeling and what you're thinking at that time. You may be feeling that it's going to go up, but it's retraced a little bit of your thought and you're starting to have anxiety about it. It may not out. That's the time when you want to swing capture and get impatient and love that. Keep that as part of your journey. Each time you do this, you're going to find that you're going to find less sensitivity or emotional attachment to these ideas because you've been there before. And yes, you see that there may be a opportunity for trades, you know, to fail and your stop loss. But if you stick with it, how many times they really have to go there? And that's the benefit of keeping your journey because unless you write the things down and keep your journey all over the trust of life and what you're thinking, you're never going to remember that. You're going to remember that really good trade and you're trying to forget with all your energy and effort and to forget those trades you've been there. You knew you were going to do it and you're going to remember them and you're going to do your best to avoid them and forget they were happening. And they're your lessons that you should learn from. So journaling is absolutely crucial to your development career. Especially if you want to be organized and you want to be collective and calm about what you're doing. That only comes by doing this exercise here. Every professional, whether it's a doctor or a lawyer, physician, psychologist, only short as they keep good records about what they say and what they have done. They do not want to rely on your memory. And you can't rely on your memory. You're going to forget things. Okay? Every seven years, your brain breaks off this little nodule, okay? And part of that, you lose memory. So it's important to keep a record of things you've said and done. Because when you have these adverse times in the future, that's very difficult to go into. You want to do that for a couple of times that you forgot how you've been through that before. And what you did, you go through it's important. So same thing, not just going into the trading day, but also how you feel while in the trade as well. Trust your personal expectations of what you felt going to happen in the place and how you're going to do versus the actual result. This is for you to be more or less the scorekeeper. You're able to soberly and balanced give a, an opinion about what you did in terms of your analysis going into the day or the week and what has happened. Now, you're not in this section of journaling to beat yourself up. That's not what this is. But what you're trying to do is highlight the things that you missed. But you don't want to draw so much attention to it. It seems like you're writing, you know, a suicide letter, like, you know, I'm no good, I'm this or that. What you're really doing is highlighting opportunities for you to develop better or spend more time focusing on your weaknesses because that's what journaling helps you do. It identifies your weaknesses. You, if you were honest with yourself, you probably have about 10 things to do with weakness. But you probably have four or five times more than that because you won't really be able to discover until you go through the journaling process. And it's not something you do for short term and you abandon it. You always do this. I've been doing it for 25 years and I did journaling for that and other things in my life. So to me, it's, it's something I've always done. You know, it's been a whole lot of time doing it, but I've always made reference to what I've done or said the previous day at the end of the day or something like that. Otherwise, if I try to do that, my mind will not allow me to because my mind's always lashing back to stamp. Many times I try to do that, even after journaling, and I have something in my mind, I can't do it by getting it in my journal because then it's, I've released it. And the only way you want to trade with a emotion free or social you get it in a well balanced mind is to have a clear conscience. Anything that's bothering you, you release it into your journal. You're not going to call your name, it's not going to say, what's the worst, it's not going to say, you don't love me enough, you don't find me enough. So when you go back to it, it's going to say the words you put in. So it's important that what you put in is going to benefit you, but you're not sure you're going to So you want to be honest about your evaluation about what you did or thought going into the day or the week and what you have to resolve for. Keep it simple. All you're doing is this is what I thought and this is what actually happened. You're not using adjectives. You're just saying facts. This is what I thought was going to happen. I was going to go here. I was going to have this effect. I was going to do this much. And this is what the actual result was. And you're not adding anything to it or attaching any emotional to it. Take one detail where you felt uncertainty and it's important how you actually cope with it. You're going to find that many of your Cooking skills for stress aren't really cooking skills. They're actually feeding that emotional stimuli and creating more stress. The only way you can find that is by actually recording it, writing it down, and maybe in trade, and maybe flirting with your memory. You already have your profit saving, your profit saving, your profit saving, your profit saving, and then you're feeling like you need to stop and you don't get that last piece of the move. What are you doing to cook with that? Are you standing in the chart, or are you taking a walk, or are you turning to your off and just saying, I'm going to do what happens at the end of the day? You're going to take a walk, or 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 you it's not that far across the top of that same resume again. It's something that's working fast, it's maintaining a stress level, and you don't want to think about what you're saying again, like smoke cigarettes, or drink, that's alcohol. Those things, you may feel like they're soothing you, but that's not. So what you're doing is focusing on when the coping mechanisms you've used to use a stressful environment. When it helps you, it's highly an opportunity for you to use that in the future. And here's the thing, many times I've learned coping skills that were high stressful events through training when I had stressful events in my personal life, I used those same coping skills. So, for instance, you know, while I'm training, you have a car's money, it's on the theater, okay? And now that I have these things called these systems, I love them, I absolutely love them. For me, it keeps me distracted from worrying about what next moves are going to be priced. I'm allowing my mind to pay now and do what it's going to do. Before I did that, I used to have a coin that I would keep calling my hand, and I would either roll through my fingers or I would keep pressing my palm, and I would just press the 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 palm
Well, you company, yourself. But you don't want your company to in the lie about how you did something right and you did it. You want to be accurate about what you're trying, but you also want to do it in a positive light. And here is the picture. When you do things messed up. And I think that's interesting too, um, just being aware that when you write in your journal, you're going to actually go back and read it. You do want to be honest, but also be nice to yourself. That's actually something that I've never really um, thought of too deeply, but I would agree with that as well. Definitely be nice to yourself. So when you're reading it, you're not just bashing yourself. Definitely, once again, be honest, but don't bash yourself and make your future self feel feel worse. Okay, and you do the wrong things and make errors. You want to avoid negatively charged words. Wherever you struggle in execution for the application of money management, for your leveraging, for your trade, you do not want to say, oh, I'm a stupid so-and-so, or I am a failure, or I'm never going to get this. Do not do those things in your journal, because your mind will latch onto that. And whatever you use negative words on, your subconscious is going to see that. And say, okay, well, this is a problem, or this is a stress, so I'm going to avoid it. So what's going to happen when you charge? So constantly, you might say, this is stressful, I'm going to avoid this, and you're not going to pay attention. Or your mind is not going to let that set up. Jump off the chart you, so that way you can engage properly. So it's very important not to use negative terms. So while this is not an exhaustive list, I want to make sure that you're using irony, the best choice for future trade. Irony is the industry leading growth that has some measure of journaling suggestions, and it only has some measure of psychological, um, well, solutions. And both of these topics can be really explored in great detail, and it comes by personal experience. And while there's a lot of bullshit about both the topics that I have mentioned, I don't think it's something that you need to make any more complicated than what I have here, because this is really the, the bare bones of what I've done in 25 years. And the best training book out there is the one you're about to write in your journal. That's the best one, because they're going to be directly related to you and your experiences. You can't teach. Your experience is someone else. You can talk about it, you can share it, you can share your own and read it, but it still won't have the same impact that your experience has for you. And that's the wonderful treasure and, well, secret weapon, if you will, of a trader by using the journal. It seems like that's where it's in for a long time. Well, nothing about it. Many traders do it. And we know what we're looking for because we studied it. We've had days and days and days on end where we have recorded the same exact setup, the same winning attitude that we went into is always there. So these are all signatures, your hallmarks of classic setups. So that when you start feeling a certain way going into Monday, if you're not one, you'll know it and you'll be honest with yourself and say, I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Otherwise, how would you know those things? Because you're talking about the interest rate, you're talking about that, that's a normal response for you. It's distracting. I need distraction. What was the other distraction? Get money. So, we might have result in a negative uh, withdrawal from your equity, but you don't know why, and we want to try to avoid those things. Okay. So, what type of things do we look for in terms of adding charts to our journal? And then you can go to the charts now and give some suggestions. And yes, technically, I do think the best book is going to be your own journal. I do agree with that. That is very important to even one, have a journal, but also go back and read it and improve your trading. But if I do have to give one recommendation for a book, I definitely liked um, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. That would be the one book that I would highly recommend for you guys to read as well. I was just the and this particular week I was looking for the market to run above 50 points, and I had to with that. But yeah, double tops, and a third time the market trades up to the same level. So we know this is too clean a level, you have a nice rejection down here, so the market push above this level. Now, if it's a clean like that, the most likely outcome should trade that level. A blast off can be higher, or retreating back down into range. Well, those happen if you sell off, people will be money, if you sell off, people will be money, and then we're going back up to this level again. So to take those individuals out, or the interest in the wrong side, fine, the market's going to push up there. So in your journal, when you start seeing these things, you're going to write down your chart, or screen capture, and you're going to take these things to write down what you think is going to happen, most likely the outcome. Okay, so we have a condition that we can wait to see what happens later on. So we're going to build a contract in your chart, in your journal, so when you go back and look at it, it pans out well, you're going to be and as soon as the event that you've been waiting for occurs, but I actually a lot of my trades at the time of the setup or the economy if you will, where I'm looking for, it's the idea. This many times is the screen capture where you get a level, a reaching for, or a level trying to get in. This is where you want to take a picture of it again. And this is why we're doing errors or a lot of different markets because I'm looking for some two things. Okay, well, five or so. It's very easy for me to dial in and get the screen capture of what I'm looking for. And I don't share my chart with all the things on it because there's a lot of things that I do in my finances and in my trading that I don't make all of it. So, but I do make references to things I'm talking about here. In terms of cases, the wrong buy stops. So, right now, I would say I would have an expectation of seeing a strong reversal. And I'll look for price going to be down into the wicks here and see how far you go as far as that low here. And I'll start dropping down to a four hour chart, more intensely, price action. We see how moving areas of stocks, because we thought the price was going to go these high here. And then we get more details and how long the time frame we would reasonably expect to see this move take place if it were All these things you add in all these open spaces on your chart. You want to make it personal, you want to make your journal and your charts something that you need to come up with and something that you're really not aiming to share with anybody. It's comfortable for you to be able to get into all the information at the time, what you're thinking at the time, the time the chart is creating the various things being captured. Okay, I'm down to the third chart. Same mindset here. We're adding in details that we're noticing. Okay, and we're here. We have Monday's trading and the anticipated rally up. Once we see those types of things, we know this is a setup. So we want to be a seller up here, but where are we reaching for? What's the draw on price? So you want to have that before the trade goes to unfold. At the same time, we're going to get a but at that time, you also want to outline what we're reaching for and what was the content behind what we expected to occur. You have a low here, that 20 and 10 of swing that we decided to go below. And here's where we're going to start meeting on this reference and that's below. And on Monday, because I don't like to trade on Monday, I like to use that Monday range and project like the Dr. Street study that was used about the indication session and the Dr. Street. And we'll take that Monday range and I'm bearish with that run and take that range on Monday and apply it right on top of this getting high. And I get the projected range of one standard deviation and we take that on the future, it's approximately what Tuesday's high of the day is. So I know that I'm looking for Tuesday's high of the day is how far we'll go up, but I'll take a look at this far, which is a little bit above that old high at 1.9.10, where it's three times and that's a positive value. So we'll probably move above that to get a So here I know we just started watching ICT's content, but what he's showing here is a standard deviation. All he's doing is plotting up the range of this Monday, I believe he said. And for the next day, he's looking for price to attack one standard deviation above which is just basically this range multiplied and put right on top and this is where this level is so he's looking for price to push to the upside before we do that because remember this is in fact a bearish week and this is the week of high this juice swing is useful when you apply three concepts to it we get a range of the juice swing and apply in one standard deviation below the low and we're taking this range and adding it for in this case subtracting from this low and projecting it down giving one standard deviation so we're seeing power free accumulation accumulating more manipulation from the stop from the buy side we're going to see hopefully move down with power free with distribution and finally distribution down here so we have three measurements of the actual juice swing Project it down and it gets us just below that will go. So that validates this potential stop while prices like this only. We don't have anything else happening yet. So we have a free scale out. And we haven't gone over it yet. I know we will later on in his content, but he's looking at this as the Judah swing price sweeping up above this high above the standard deviation as well. And then looking for price to push on lower, giving us that power of three. Accumulation, accumulation, distribution, trained before the move even
sweep below low. And we're going to measure from the high spike to low spike in these two price swings. And that projection down is exactly a 300 extension. Right there, and I see it's the low leg, which is absolutely low. That's the 10 to swing below, still below. So we have several things being used here that we're giving in recent teachings. Every one of these screen captures, you would write down any notation that would be necessary for you to have as benefit. And that way we can go to the link, usually on Saturday morning for me, you know, Saturday for you. But I like to take the opportunity to go to the market and see what I didn't see and note that. But every day, I'm writing down my expectations or what I should be. And I'm recording what I should have. And it builds my confidence in how much I'm right and when I'm wrong. Even though I learned something from the, well, the time I was not accurate, it proves that I'm more right than I'm wrong. So therefore, I don't fear being wrong. And I use the time I'm wrong to learn what it is I did wrong. So I'm taking no pain out of the experience. So when he's journaling, what he's trying to show us is that he is journaling throughout the process. So he's showing before what he anticipates price to do. And even as price continues and progresses and in this case continues on with what he is predicting price to do he is still plotting out what he thinks price is going to do after that and then showing the aftermath as well so not only just marking the charts before not only just marking up the charts after price has completed whatever it's done but also marking up in the midst of things and trying to show exactly what you're thinking or also feeling in the moment I'm looking at it, okay, this is actually like a workout. Okay, I'm, I'm strengthening myself, I'm, I'm pretty stressed on my body with the end to make it stronger. Okay, so I'm looking at adversity and training as a defeat. I look at it as exercise and strengthening, iron, sharpening, iron. So we can see how using tools here, you get more intense. Well, this could be very weekly low. Okay, if you trade through it, so be it. But this is all I would get, that's fine. Because this would be average reply to the weekly range. Okay, and I'll find that one weekly on the opening. We're going to get the control line, and then use the trend line to draw for the top end of the actual control line. And I'll draw a little cardinal tick representing the open, and then I forecast why I close on the end. And it's a heavy word, so I'll do that to teach myself. You know, I can uh, try and dial in as I can for what I project to close. That's not some really accurate. No, I'm not accurate. But I'm more inclined to focus on what the foundation of the high is going to be and how far of a reasonable check out low can go. And if you don't know where it cares, I'm sure it is about having an opportunity to get some range expansion. And one day we also see that there was no return back to the opening price on Sunday. Once it moved to the New York session. So we saw you really coming. So a lot of things took place in the dark past week that we have outlined before. There are hallmarks of the things I'll tell you. And we did, in fact, one of the wise guys I mentioned in the higher time frame scenario. And conditions uh, made for this for us to set up the years for 2017. So if you enjoyed this presentation, if you'd like to find more, you can go to the website at dnstructure.com. All right, that is the end of day one. So I did write some notes. I will go ahead and simplify those notes and organize them and give it to you guys tomorrow. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I will catch you guys tomorrow.